and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the men who stare at sports ball. Finally back after a long, long stretch of uh, of not hiatus, just really, really bad timing. <laughs> we are b we are back to talk up to talk about glorious, glorious hockey and even more glorious shit posting. <laughs> because. Because, well, the NHL season has come and gone. I do want to make clear I I completely forgot that yesterday was the expansion draft for the upcoming Seattle Kraken. You didn't even know what it was. Like, the schedule for how everything is going to go in July mm -hmm. was going to be, like, was released literally in the middle of the freaking finals. So, yeah, there, there was no there was no way I could there was no way I could have no, I could have known that. And the fact that the at the at the entry draft is tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. So we we're in the, we're in the very interesting middle spot, which is just fine for us. Mm -hmm. I find it very coincidental. I yeah. had I had considered doing a tier maker like we did like we did at the start of the season, but I decided not to because I didn't feel like going back and re listening to um our predictions to see how well how well things turned out um. As much Spoiler as we alert, we were half right, half wrong, half humiliated. Yeah, half humiliated. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that be that being said that being said, um when it comes this was Actually we were probably we need to do introductions before we continue. Yes, but <laughs> bef just to get on just to get on that, once again, I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two Two lovers of sport. Two lovers of sports ball. With me, we have the we have the the man who is cur who is currently cl who is currently cleaning up all the all the sodium from hi from his from his provincial countrymen <laughs> in his neck of the woods. Good brother cure, and we ha and we have the we have the man who is both laughing and raging at hit at the teams in his province. Good brother Matty, <laughs> how the mm -hmm. fuck we doing tonight? <laughs> I don't know if I'm raging from my sports teams, especially with the miracle run, and we will definitely uh, discuss that. Obviously, because that's what the fuck we're doing tonight. Yeah. But uh, I'm more, I'm more proud and and disappointed at at my hockey team, and raging at Vincent K. McMahon. But that's another story for another day. And actually, I'm go I'm going to. I'm going to update the image so that I so that I don't accidentally talk talk about somebody who already made it who is already in the playoffs. <laughs> this year. Um. So this was it. This was a in, this was going to be an interesting year simply because of the fact that there was a massive realignment and reshuffling of the divisions. There wasn't there wasn't the um, Eastern and Western Conference, but instead you had four divisions. Central, East, West, and North. Um, I am not. I am not entirely sure if they're going to be going with this format next year. It would not be the. It would not be the first or last time that um, that a, that a division alignment was was done in in hockey's history. Um, what I do, but. What I do know is that, unless I'm mistaken, they're planning on extending the amount of games played um, in in the 2021-22 season. As of, as of right now, I do know that, that they said the first game of the Kraken would be against the Canucks, but obviously we're still in the middle of the worldwide pandemic, and despite uh, a lot of people being smart people and, and getting their two jabs, uh, still things can hit a fan, so who knows? Yeah. Um, at the, when I remember, I do remember, he I do remember hearing, I do remember hearing something, something about, um, something about more games next season. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually go going to happen, but we will, but we will see. That be, that being said, there are, we are going to be splitting this into two parts. The first part, we're going to be, sh we're going to be discussing the teams that didn't make the playoffs in e in each division. And then we'll be discussing the teams that did, and and ultimately the team that won. And um, brace for salt and drinking. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's going to be both. 
Well, not right now. I already have my beverages and I do have work tomorrow. Uh, so we're recording this on Thursday and then tomorrow would be Friday. But uh, the, the, believe me, there will be salt tomorrow. Like I'm doing my, my part the wrestle cast tomorrow. There will be salt. And since I have a week off, uh, there will be beverages drunk. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, I'm not, and I'm not eating a bowl of pretzel. No. Yet. No, not, a, not that you know of. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is why I this is why I don't use cameras. <laughs> Radio baby. Mm -hmm. We're live, pal. Yep. <laughs> But let's. Um... Hey, by the way, by the way, before we get in too much into the hockey stuff, a hearty congratulations to, to, to the Minnesota in this call, the Bucks NBA champions. Um, that's Mil that's Mil that's Milwaukee, but I'll take it. That's, yeah, that's oh, yeah, Milwaukee. That's stupid. Um, damn it. To, to be fair, All right. to be fair, a lot a lot of people make that mistake. I uh, I will t I will take it anyways for two reasons. One, I get to I get to I get to watch I get to watch everybody at ESPN eat a mountain of shit. Charles yes. Barkley is probably <laughs> laughing his ass off because he he swore up and down this season that the Bucks were going were going to win, and nobody believed him. And he's he's going he's literally in pants unzipped, going, come on. Second, second. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, he has been eating a bag of shit. Um, must be David Andrew. Why? And oh. Considering what happened last night, pretty much so. Yep. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ESPN. The only thing that's good on the damn show is pardon the interruption, and even that's questionable now. They yep. called the Carolina Hurricanes the Panthers, Matty. That's hilarious on three fronts. We'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that mound of awesome. <laughs> well, speak, speaking of that, do you want do you want to cover the expansion draft now or later? We may as well bring it up. I mean, at this point. So, first off, this was not a good first outing for ESPN's first coverage of a draft. It was it it was very clear that they were tr that they were trying to replicate the the gl the glitz and and the like of the um of the NFL draft. When this is an expansion draft, it's not it's not in the same kind of field. Um, especially especially there. First off, nothing tilts me harder than bad audio. Bad video I can handle. Ooh. When you when you assault my eardrums, we have problems. Yeah, and I that was the first thing I brought up. I watched about ten minutes of highlights. Mm -hmm. The audio. Someone at Disney, someone please sack the audio guy. What the like? I understand it's outdoors. Mm -hmm. You can't hand, you can't fix everything. Oh yeah. But the, at the very beginning, everything should work a hundred percent. You can't get that. You're boned. Not completely fucked. You could still fix it, but you start boned. And this is like ESPN's first broadcast with with the. Uh, with the NHL shield on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, good luck with the rest of the contract, pal. Yeah. Now, when now when it comes now, um, when it comes, I know that I know that Tree is gen, is going to be doing is going to be doing a haters guide to the to the NHL draft, and he did the shit stravaganza um, stream. And Dangle and uh, Jesse Blake had their show, and that's what I was listening to uh, last night while watching the the awesome uh, AEW, the awesomeness that is all Elite Wrestling Dynamite. Cheap plug, sorry. But at the same time, <laughs> uh, I the dude, uh, all of those like even your your urinating trees show was a better produced show than the SPN, which is not, which is not a, which is kind of praising with faint dams, but. I don't. I don't really feel the need to go it to go in detail with every player that was drafted, large largely because of largely because of the fact that for a lot of it, for a lot of it, it's a lot of it's exactly what I expected from an expansion draft. A lot of this is, a this lot is, of the be the best of what you could get. Yeah, like uh, the, the 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 basically it's the anti Vegas. Vegas had to be well. We got big players like a Mark Andre Fleury and the. 
And obviously, they took advantage of that that first year. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a couple of names. Uh, but one name that pops up was uh, Jared McCann, who, who the Leafs had acquired literal days before. Mm -hmm. What was the point of that? What was the point of that trade again? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got no idea on that front. Um, I will say that I vehemently disagree with this whole Ve Vegas was Vegas was off the table when it came to the expansion draft. I think the whole I think the entire NHL fandom going, get your ass in there, you pricks. I don't understand why though. Like they already have the second pick, overall pick of the entry draft tomorrow. So yeah, like like at that point they get the second overall pick. It's like okay, you can have one. You can have the top second. It's, it's, uh, so you can have the second pick. You can have the you could you you could stay out. You could stay out the expansion draft. You could be safe from the expansion draft, or you get the second pick. You ain't getting both. But it's 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 you know Batman who's a pussy and a, and a bitch at the same time. At the, I will give Batman credit in the in the fact that he's he's kind of he's kind of embraced the booing. Um, Dude, you're you're a commissioner slash president presidential figure in sports. You're going to get booed. And that's you, 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 that don't impress me much. To yeah. quote United Green. And to be and to be quite honest, there are there are bigger offenders when it comes to sports commissioners. Oh yeah, this is literally like his his non his nonchalant and that's when it comes to officiating is nothing. Like yeah. there are. There are worse people in the world, and he's and to be fair, Batman runs a tighter sh a tight ship. Yeah, I will not take that away from him. But uh, I'm looking at the Brandon Tanev out of the Penguins. That's a good pick. Mm -hmm. uh, John Quenville. Let's see. They they passed on, for me. It's like I I was scared. Like for the Montreal Canadiens pick, I, I was. A little worried, obviously, because you know, obviously Carey Price. Yeah. But they didn't go for it. They went with Kale Fleury, which which is a good uh, defensive pick. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I was like, uh, there, that was a scary couple of days. But when the the the, the news came out, I was like, don't worry, folks. Uh, we're we're not. They're not taking Price. I'm like, Whew. yeah. The um the memes the memes were flowing when that when it, when it when it was revealed that they were exposing Carey Price and I'll get I'll get to that later but oh yeah let's um let's get into the nitty gritty of this and let's start with the central division starting with tonight on the fault in our stars <laughs> okay first off let, let me say I knew that it was a fucking fluke let me let me say um the whole the whole neon uniform thing. Let's not do that again. Oh, uh, you know, the, the whole neon thing was hey, let's do let's let's do our own version of re reverse retro. And I'm gonna nip that right in the bud when it comes to those jerseys. Uh, the the thought is 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 absolutely 100 percent echoed. Never do that shit again. The Habs look like shit in those reverse retro jerseys. That was an eyesore. It literally hurt. I mean, yeah, and the Dallas jersey, it's, yeah, especially. I mean, if you re if you really re really want to do, want to do a want to do a retro jersey, just do just do no just do no just do North Stars like you like in like any other year. Hell, with uh, with uh, with the Avalanche, the, uh, I think either this or last year they had the Nordiques jerseys with like except they just switch a couple the the color palette to match with the Avalanche, but otherwise. Those were Nordiques jerseys. Carolina, they had the Hartford Whalers, Whalers jersey. They even played the damn song too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, now when it comes, this this was very much a playoff hangover year for the Stars. Obviously, they, they did have they did have some they did have some issues with, with when it came when it came to the injury bug, like everybody else did, but. They just could. They just couldn't get anything. Go. They just couldn't get anything going consistently. Injury bug, COVID bug, mm -hmm. every other bug. Good every lord. Everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, bug. <laughs> yeah, and because and um, because 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 of that because of that, I'd. They um, in fact, let me let me get the 
Let me get the percentage because because if I'm reading this right, they were impressively mediocre. Um, all right, right now they they had uh, games they had uh, twenty three wins, nineteen losses, uh, fourteen overtime losses. Mm-hmm. So they the for a total of uh, my God, this shit's complicated. <laughs> You see, this is this is why I don't this is why I don't work in analytics. Yeah, sixty points. There we go. I was looking at. The, I was trying to find that there. Six for for a total of sixty points. Yikes. Yeah. Um, Beat out by the Preds by four. By the way, Preds got in with sixty four. So. Yeah. I'll have I'll have th- I'll have things to say about them later. But over overall, um, the. Th- they're they're once again, they're once again back at back in back in mediocrity and I think and um I I don't think they're getting out I don't think they're getting out of that until until they um d- until they start making some moves. Now granted if now granted if they end up going back if they end up going back in the finals again as a Minnesotan I will be as salty motherfucker. <laughs> but you expect that by now. Um then we have the Blackhawks, who they weren't great, but they were better than they've been the last few years. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way: I I expected a few things from this division. I did not expect the Blackhawks to be bottom of the barrel. The fact that they wound up where they wound up was about where I expected of them. I knew they they were not going to make the playoffs. Again, a case of the same thing. Bit of the injury, bit of the uh, mediocre. Like at that point, this this is a rebuild year in a sense. Yeah. And when it but when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the black when it comes to the Blackhawks, honestly, as long as they stay the course, they may they may be able to get to the show in a few, in a few years. But it's oh, but they're a little ahead of schedule right now. This is this is the painful part about rebuilding, folks. You have to deal with sucking for a few years. Um, speaking Pretty of re- much. speaking of rebuilding, the Red Wings. How the fuck did the Red Wings not be bottom of the Central Division? <laughs> yeah. The I was like, I look at this, I'm like, Blue Jackets should have finished higher than this. The re- the Red Wings. I can I can say this. They the last time we talked about them, the re- the Red. Oh Wings my god! They the beat team. out the Blue Jackets out of the bottom by tiebreaker. Yeah, same amount of points. It's very. <laughs> I will. I will give them. I will give them credit. I will give Stevie credit for for managing to very to very successfully fleece Washington in that. Tra- in they that did. Tra- they fucking did. But that's just the first step. If Eisenman is if Eisenman is trying to is trying to do here what he's what he tried to do in Washington, not not Washington in Tampa, he's got a long way to go. They're not. They're he's- not. St- they're not bowling shoe ugly. But they are no that they are nowhere near. It's still a fixture upper at this point. It's you, you, the, the, let's put it this way: they came into the sh- he came into the shit show and it looked like like a proper bad house. But the foundation is solid. Yeah, they stripped out the the the, the mold and and destroyed and the carcasses and the one body that was left back there. That's all gone. But it's still nothing but. Cement and wood and a little bit of insulation. That's about it. So the fact that they didn't fire their coach is a promising sign, especially since coaches seem to be the first seem to be the first thing to go at the end of a season when somebody isn't doing all that well. Yeah, I mean Black Saturday is a thing in football for a reason. Yep. So stay the course, Red. W- I don't think we're going to get a return of the Evil Empire this decade, but keep going. Then we get to the Blue Jackets, and oh boy, the oh. the, the Ohio cur- the Ohio curse returns. Yeah, yeah. From from making what the Leafs look like garbage to bottom of the division. When when they when they hit the playoffs that year, I did say that if they if they did not go far, this was this was going to this was going to result in years of pain. I present to you 
the first year of pain. Yup. Because they j just nothing went right for <laughs> for them at all. Nothing went right. Not not a goddamn thing. And I can't even blame this. I can't even blame this on the coup because even if we weren't in a pandemic, they'd still be sniffing the bottom of the barrel. The, the playoff hangover. Mm -hmm. That's what th th this is. Playoff hangover and the fact that they during that all all in pu all in pushes have a very high, have a very high failure rate because it because in order for it to work, everything has to go right. Nothing went right. <laughs> Nothing. So, as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, when it com when it comes to them, blow it up. That's really the only thing that's going to save you at this point. Sell 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 for for uh for sell for parts rebuild. Mm -hmm. Um. Then we now, then we get to the East Division, and once again we have to start with a soap opera. Tonight, <laughs> on all my rangers. Sell the team, Dolan! First off, Do um, <laughs> apparently J apparently James Dolan decided to unleash his inner Karen this year. No! Just because, just because, of, just because of one dirt, because of one dirty hit <laughs> with the, ca with the Capitals, they just, they decided to put that whole... Did you see that um, release that they put complaining to the NHL? Yes! Oh my god, that was Dolan's doing? I I, why was, am I not surprised? I, didn't, I don't know if it was Dolan's doing, but it was somebody in the office's doing. And because of that, they ended up getting fined more than the guy who got who got flagged for, for, the, um, for that dirty hit. Oh, 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 oh. You know I have to hit this now. You know I have to hit this now. I, 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 I it's a bit, but who cares? You. That's it. That said, the I was I was not I was not expecting the the Rangers to go to go anywhere this year because hey. they um. Hey. They are dealing with the consequence of always of trying to rely way too much on King Henrik, who they com who they completely wasted, and they now have. and now they're dealing with the consequence because now they don't have King Henrik, so they don't have anything to fall back on. The age of of uber relying on go on um on a hot goaltender to carry it to carry a shit team died with died with the um two thousands. Yeah. But you look at the points. Everyone was a, everyone that made the uh, made the show was above seventy points. The Rangers had sixty, so they had something, but obviously not not enough. And given the fact that Dolan is, Dolan decided to go on a firing spree in the off season, I don't think they're get, I don't even think they're getting that far next year. Nope. So, yeah. So. Sell the f sell the fucking team, Dolan. At this point, sell the teams, plural. Mm -hmm. it, is it weird that I feel bad with the first overall pick last year? Now, I Jesus, yeah. Um, although when it when it comes to teams, I we do have to we do have to give a bit of a cheers to the Atlanta Hawks for putting Knicks fans in their place. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 it didn't. Hey, at least it didn't choke. Ooh, true, very true. Also, but I I can say I can say this um the east of the east division was a very top heavy shit show this year. <laughs> yeah, this I mean you look at the teams, Pens, Caps, Bruins, Islanders. This was uh this was going to be a, yeah. Yeah. Hang on, yeah. Hang on, hang on. I got to do this first. <clears throat> Fuck you, Boston. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to them. As I, I, yeah, we'll get to them. But also, um, here, your least fan, I'm a Habs fan. This will, this will make Boston even saltier. Do no, sweet no, no, me, no, no, no. do sweet me, brother. In any sports, Toronto versus, versus Boston. Whatever, do sweet me. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
God damn it, but, dude. But then we get to the Flyers, and I remember, you know, at the start of the season, I felt I felt like, okay, the Flyers managed to actually sh- managed to actually get to the show for once. Maybe they're starting to turn around, and we'll start to see more playoff runs. For that Apparently, moment. no. Shows what the fuck I know. <laughs> Jesus, I did. I'm like, of all the teams that made it, I thought, well, the, the, the Flyers are a clinch for at least three or four. No, that no. And this is this is a I can't they didn't have a whole lot of in, it wasn't an, it wasn't the injury bug. No, it was just really 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 bad coaching. Um, and then but then again we probably should have seen the writing on the wall because they were getting the they were getting the reincarnation of AB hockey. Yeah, we saw how that worked for a decade with the Rangers, where they kept shooting themselves in the dick. And now it's Philly's turn to shoot themselves in the dick. And no, folks, he did not misspoke. They shot both their feet off anyway. It's it's up to the dick now. Yeah. And eventually it will reach the head and they'll have to blow it up, but it has not gone to that. Uh, that has not gone to pass yet. You know how you know how it is when some when somebody when somebody grabs when ownership grabs a what they think is a big name and think and think this guy will turn ourselves around and they never do. Nope. Once again, friends don't let friends make the Flyers do contracts. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Um. Okay. Now, Monk. Mm-hmm. How the fuck are the Devils not bottom of the bo- of the of the freaking barrel? We'll get to the, we'll get to the real. That's because we'll get to the real bottom of the barrel in a minute. Because I got some things <laughs> to say about that. I know. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the closest thing to a nice thing I can say about about the Devils is that you weren't the biggest shit show in the East. Um, <laughs> I know. You, you are you are kind of learning not to put PK Subban on the penalty kill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My God, that went. How the fuck do you fuck up PK Subban that much? See, he in Montreal, he was a good player. He he leave, he, leave, he leaves a good team. He becomes a shit player. The big pro- the big problem, as as this often happens when somebody grabs a star player, is assuming is assuming that they're going to get this ca- this um catch this catch all kind of person. PK Subban. Is is only going to be as good as as you as well as you play within his niche. When he he is a he is a ver, he's a very good he's a very good counter puncher who should not be on the pe, who should not be on the penalty kill. He's good. In he, should be, he should be on the power play because mm-hmm. that's his that's part of his niche. Yeah, he is a he is a he what he was. He was a very good all rounder during during the during the height of his run in in Montreal, but yeah. um, at this but point, he's, in his in his in his age, he's developed a niche that is still very useful, mm-hmm. but underutilized. Yeah, and there's there's also the fact that they were giving him way too they were giving him way too many minutes. Yeah, and. The thing, the thing about power, the thing about guys who are best in the power play is you should be using them in short bursts. Now, the big, the big problem, the big problem when it came to when it came to the Devils, a lot of it, ha- a lot of it has to do with the fact that leadership kept changing. They ended up going through two, two or three different visions in the last few, in the last two years. And because. Because of the, and because of that, that's why that's why their their points are are, are at forty are at forty five. They just can't, they just once again can't get can't get anything done because they can't fe- seem to pick a direction and stick with it. They can't win for losing. And unfortunately, this is not going to be another year where they able where they're able to tank their way to the top of the lottery. Nope. Because. They had their chance twice with that shit, and they blew both of them. <clears throat> but even even so, I do feel I I really do feel bad for PK Subban because by all by all accounts he's a, he's 
a cl he's a class act and a bit and a bit of a shit poster because when he got signed by the Devils, he changed his profile pic to his normal self with de with um with a pitchfork and devil horn saying, "Yeah, th this will be this will be the new look, but because my because my Devils uniform hasn't come in yet." <laughs> <laughs> no, P. T. Subban is a class act, as you said, and he's he's a quality human being who. Is talented enough that does had he deserves a Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. He just keeps getting traded to places where he's not gonna get that shit. Why yeah. did he trade it away from why would he trade it from Montreal again? He wasn't traded from Montreal. Because, he was traded he was traded from Nashville. Yeah, because Mark Bergevin is a cancer. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought I thought I thought it was because I heard Brendan the guy the guy that was saying that BK PK Simmons was a bad person was secretly racist or something. Take that kind of shit with a grain of salt, especially since yeah. there was nothing that really backed it up. The that's that's um that's why there's the joke that he was that he got he got ran out of Montreal because he wasn't French enough. Which if you know, there is a grain of salt, a grain of truth to that, but at the same time, our fan base is fucking fickle. Yeah. Um. But then no, it, we... took, it, it took cancer for us to warm up the Saku Goibu. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Because because you can't you can't say no to cheering a guy who beat the shit out of cancer. And if you do, you're a fuck you're a fucker. Mm. Period. But speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of fuckers, step right, <laughs> step right up to the greatest shit show in the East, the oh, Buffalo oh. Sabers. Ladies and gentlemen, hashtag save Jack Eichel. Now, I. I ha I was fully I was fully confident that the Sabers were going to go nowhere at the start of the season. And Monk, they went nowhere. The only thing that I got wrong was how much of a shit show they would be. Oh my god, it was uh look at that record. 15 34 7. Mhm. Mm 15 34 you at fuck the you are you are fuck up the devils. I, I think the problem, I think this clip pretty much sums up sums it up, Meldra. Hang on, let me see. Let me see what you got. Oh, I have. I believe we have that button. Mm -hmm. I expect nothing, and I'm still let down. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not let down. I find this hilarious. No, this is uh, <laughs> this is get your popcorn and you're watching The Walking Goddamn Dead. I do I do want to I do want to point out that um, Mrs. Pagula I find to be I find to be a wonderful wonderful model for female empowerment because she shows that incompetence knows no gender. It is a true belief in equality. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter with whether whether you whether you're a man, a woman, or somewhere in between. Anyone can be a fucking idiot when running a hockey franchise. You. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, and by the way, for, for those wondering, if for those offended by that, ladies and gentlemen, this monastery is equal opportunity. We will praise you, no matter your gender. But you trip on your dick, no matter your gender, you will be laughed at. Yep, <laughs> and Remember this is the first this... rule of shit posting, folks. Mm -hmm. We hold these truths to be self-evident: that all life is cremated equal. Yep. <laughs> ash to ashes, dust to dust. But get but the first off, let me get this joke out of the way. Thirty-seven. The Sabers only got thirty-seven points in a row. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was that was low hanging fruit, but I had to. A boom. But in but in all ser in all seriousness, um, in my experience, anytime somebody ha anytime somebody heavily advertises that they have a family atmosphere when running a franchise, run. Because because the because the family the family thing the family shit. Nine times out of ten, it is it is very clickish. One, wait, one, wait, one, wait, one, wait, one. wait, 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 time out, time out. These, the Buffalo Sabres or WWE? Yes. yes. Okay. 
and whoever whoever did, whoever did the whoever did the uniforms for that alumni game should prop should have been fired. How the how the no, fuck sure they, they drug out to into the street and shot. I mean, how the fuck yeah. do you give do you give do you give your your longtime alumni um, Chinese knockoffs of old jerseys and miss and misspell one of your star one of your old star players' names? Uh... Oh. <laughs> That's a fail and a half right there. I think anyone, any, anyone get the feeling that uh, John Spano is going to buy the Buffalo Sabres just for a fuck? <sighs> to be Rocky to be quite Spano. honest, I'd to be quite honest, I'd consider that an improvement at this point. <laughs> no, and actually, no. Uh, this for those wondering, uh, ESPN big shot. It, it the guy that almost frauded his way to an NHL franchise legitimately. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a lengthy story, but it's but it's one of the biggest it's one of the biggest embarrassments in hockey history. It's 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 it, it, it there's a, I don't know if it's on the SPN or like on a streaming service, but if you could find it, watch it. It is stuff of a legend. Mm -hmm. I I have. That's why I made the joke. Yeah. Wait, but Thanos, I can hear you in an entry right now. No, 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 wrong one. Spano, as a oh, yes. Okay. okay, I misheard. Um, but when when it comes to but when it comes to let's put it this way, you're meow. Yeah, that's all it is. No, no shame. Mm -hmm. There was a deep cut anyway. But I th what I think it what I think is very telling regard regarding this whole family atmosphere thing is there were about three or four different stories that I saw in the last year of. So of someone who was doing terribly in buff in Buffalo, got traded elsewhere and were do and were doing much much better. And that when you've got, I think there were at least three different stories of that. And one and one of them, um, I do one of them I do recall mentioning that his time in this he he said that his time in this with the Sabers almost killed his love for hockey. Who was it again? I can't I can't recall at the moment, but the fact that I kept seeing that 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 is that is a wor that is a worrying atmosphere, and because of that, even if they did blow it up, the pro the the problem is the fish lies at the head, and that that fish being being Miss Pagula, and the the fact that she if she um if she did this if she did the smart thing and just let the hockey men do hockey things, they'd probably be in a better position. But the fact that she it the fact that she that both her and T and Terry are so are meddlesome on the matter is not helping. Um. Well, that brings us to the West. Oh, I got a story for our audience, ladies and gentlemen. But we will begin with the the deconstruction of the Coyotes, like Evangelion style, or. No, 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 no! Don't worry. I, I brought it up in 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 a previous call here. You'll get it. Mm -hmm. But we'll begin with with the season that was before we get to the uh, the story at hand. Yeah, it seemed so. the The Coyotes managed to manages to sniff a playoff managed to sniff a playoff season last year. And then they and then they ended up getting um, getting bulldozed by the Avalanche again. Um, Pretty much, because because well, it is it is what it is. They had the goal to they had the goal to win a game when they should have just kept their head down. So that so because of that, the they had the Avalanche had to salt the earth as they always do. But the the even though first off. Midway through the season, they collapse again. Yeah. But the unfortunate, the unfortunate part is, even, even though they were, ge even though they were getting better, all of their improvements on the ice were overshadowed by all the shit that was happening off it. Whether it be, whether it be the, the, I'd say the, I'd say the first sign that we were about to see a shit show. Was when they ended up incurring the wrath of the NHL for illegal scouting. Whoops. Which ended up fucking them over for two 
which is going to be fucking them over for yet another year when it comes to their draft options. Um. Th- but then there, then there was, then there was the whole thing of of the per- of the person that they drafted that become a, that became a media circus. <laughs> Johnny Hockey. Oh God. No, I'm not. I'm not referring to. I'm not referring to Johnny Hockey. I'm referring to. I'm referring to the guy who ha- who who was in who got put in juvie for 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 um for ex for ridiculous amounts of bullying to a to a disabled kid. Oh, oh are you fucking kidding me? It's true. Yeah. Um, they cl- they they claimed that they claimed that they didn't know, but they but um give. But given all that goes into scouting combines, there's no way they could. There's no way they could have not known. Um, especially, especially when you consider that a scouting combine goes through a lot of interviews and a lot, a lot of checking and double checking of everything. Um, I think I think Brian Burke has has told a few stories about it about his instance with with um with um scouting interviews. Yeah. Of but uh, there, there is a. They also fired a head coach and decided to hire another one. And uh, there is a somewhat personal connection to this. All right. So I've explained this to to, to Monk uh, the other time. So this will not be new to him, but for our audience out there, the new head coach of the Arizona Coyotes just happens to be a, a, a fellow by the name of the. Uh, of Andre Turini. Now, for those wondering who, well, he is a he is uh, prominently remembered as a uh, major junior coach, uh, basically at the CHL level, which is just under the NHL slash AHL slash you know, the pros, essentially. Mm-hmm. He was the coach of my old hometown Rouen Aranda Huskies for the longest time. And then, uh, as uh, up until this uh, past season, he was the head coach of the Ottawa 67s. Both teams enjoyed relative success. They, they were always a playoff threat. Whenever, whenever they had a good team going, they made it all the way to either the President's Cup or the Memorial Cup final. But the thing with it was they also, they also ran out of gas. So much so... Then when I brought up his hiring to my dad, he went who my normally very calm, very cool, very collected father lost his shit. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Andre Turigny has a reputation for hey, great in the regular season, can't finish the job. So congratulations, Arizona. You're going you get your you put yourself together a good hockey team. You are playoff bound until you leave. Uh, until you lose Andre Torini. The bad news is you're not sniffing the cup at any time soon, anyways. No, um, especially especially when especially when we all, we all know it's only a matter of a matter of time before they before they before they move to Houston. Like oh great, I can hear the succubus right now. Do not, do not be attracted by the succubus. Move to Quebec. We, we are, we are safe harbor. Quebec City is safe. Houston is evil. Don't touch it. It's evil. Some people say that that the Panthers are gonna move to Quebec, Matty. That ain't happening. Some Fuck people. no, that's not happening. No. Batman will, 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 will see them rot in Florida before they move to the move any. He moves anything to Quebec. And. Let's let's not for, let's not forget that um it wouldn't be the first time that bet that Batman blo- that Batman blocked a potential move he did that he did that with both Nashville and with um Pittsburgh yeah um but when so when so when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to the Coyotes they are they are they are, go- they are going to be the West Coast version of the of the Minnesota Wild. Um, close, but not close enough. Yeah. Basically, 
But hey, you know what? For Arizona, being a playoff, uh, being a perennial playoff contender is an upgrade. Well, it could be worse. You could be a fan of the Diamondbacks. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. No, he's not. You're not, Monk. No. But when it comes to... But again, you know what? They got they got a good coach. They got a good coach. He can't, he can't up, but he's still the coach. Let's see. Let's see how long he lasts because we know how we know how it is with the deck chairs in the NHL. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So I'm just I'm just saying if we see if I all see roasting is, all roasting aside as someone who as someone who's brought the Huskies to playoff relevance and the 67s to the the playoff relevance. I obviously wish him the best, man. I get to the playoffs, get those cups, get those trophies, get what you deserve. God damn it! But also, stop choking. Moving on. Stop. Now, when it comes to the Kings, mm. I, there wasn't really a whole lot that whole lot that went on with them. They were impressively. What's your read? I could not. I could not get a pulse out of these guys. I. Like, what's your read on that? Because I'm like. I they should like, be higher on the list, but they're not. I feel like I feel like they're still. I feel like they are still paying. They're still paying the price for all of those, all the all those extensions and all and all those boys club moves they made over the last three years. Yeah. So they're not. They're not in. Ta- they're not in tank mode. They're ju- they're in punishment mode. But in. Although um I do I do love the I do love the bit of superstition where the, where they where they felt that they needed to rem- they needed to remove a banner because they thought it was cursing them. Oh, which banner did they remove? Um, I think it, if I if I recall correctly, it was a it was a um I think I keep I keep remember hearing about it being some kind of Taylor Swift related thing that was that was put up there when Co- when Kobe was at a show, and the oh. main thing that cursed them. On one hand, it's e- on one hand it's easy to laugh at that kind of thing, but on the other hand, um, there there are no there are no there are no atheists in spo- in sports clubs. Yeah, you know what. We have, it's weird. We have the we have something similar in in in, in Montreal as called as the Ghosts of the Forum mm-hmm. at the Bell Center. So there is superstition, folks. Yeah. And yeah, that is that is me taking a spin on the old adage: there are no atheists in foxholes. Nope. Um. Now, when it comes to the sharks, I hate you. I hate you <laughs> so much. I wish I could hate you to death right now. How do you fuck up Carlson? Seriously. Carlson, Jumbo Joe, you you are see you are seeing the fir- you're seeing the first stage in the in that whole in that whole thing of throw of throwing extensions to everybody. And I I honestly th- I honestly think that Carlson should 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 take some should take some time off because he, well, he certainly has his instincts. His mobi- his mobility is really screwed up. His gro- his groin injury might be might be coming back in full swing. If that's the case, he should take the the first. If, if the season is a full one, he should take half of it off just to rest and be healed. Yeah, and as far as far as as far as ju- as I feel I feel bad for Jumbo Joe because he does he does he's another guy who is a class act who des, who deserves at least at least so, at least some sort of cup. He needs his Ray Bork moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? This guy is so determined that he'll get it. He was smart enough to leave the Sharks in the first place. We sh- we need to give him credit for that at the very least. Yeah. Um. But I and I, on paper and on paper. He picked a good team. Mm-hmm. On paper, we'll get to that team eventually. Obviously, yeah. Um, but when but the sh- but the sharks are, but the sharks are get are going to are going to be in he- are going to be in hell for a few for a few years. 
They're not mm-hmm. going to suck enough where they where they can get high, where they can get high on they can get high draft picks, but they're not going to be good enough to really go any go anywhere for a while. Um, but they're going to get good. They're going to they're they're not going to take the high ones, but they're going to get good draft picks where they could that work. They could still do things with those picks. Mm-hmm. Um, when it but when it comes to the Ducks, another year, another disappointment. I feel bad for my sister. She she is. If she's not a if she if she's not cheering for a Canadian team, her team is the Ducks. And I'll let you with. And she's a fan of the movie, so you do math. Do you do the math? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the movies as, as well. Get, especially given that so much of it takes place in my hometown. <laughs> um, there are a lo- there are a lot of movies around around that time that took that took place in that took place in the Twin Cities. But, Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't even think about it. Uh, but anyway, back to Rose Duck here. Yeah, for what for whatever reason, they just have they just haven't been able to get anything done since two. Th- the only thing that they've been able to get done is is um be, is being is being the grim Re- being the grim reaper for Anaheim. And well, not grim reaper for Anaheim. What what am I saying? Being the grim reaper for Calgary. Because for whatever reason, every time, every time, every time the Flames have have to deal with the Ducks, they always end up getting their ass kicked. But hang on, hang on a moment. So that brings us to the to the North Division, the short the Ooh. shortest of it, the shortest of it, the division because we only have three teams that didn't make that. Team Batman. If you had the Nordiques, we'd have eight for everybody. Dumbass. So, anyway. first off, the Flames, also known as Perpetual Disappointment. <laughs> once, again, once again, the the Flames on paper should be should be a team that can get it done, but as always, we are get we are gifted with horrific underachieving. Ooh, ooh, in the righteous world. There'll be there'll be the flames. There'll be a there'll be a team in blue. And uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I got it right. The Canucks are the bottom of there, which I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, flames. Ah. The, the 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 playoff matchup ideally should have been Flames Oilers. We should have had. That battle of, Al- of Alberta in there. To be frank, I want another goalie fight. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, once again, once again, for what I'm not, even, I'm not even entire sh- I'm not even entirely sure if they should stay the course or blow or blow it up. But something needs to be done because this is this is. What the third or fourth year in a row that they that they've had that they've had something that they just keep regressing further and further back. I don't know if blowing up it might be the issue. I think it might be a case of don't blow up the team, blow up the management, because the team should be higher on the list. Mm-hmm. Something with management's got to go. You're going full Atlanta. <laughs> don't go full Atlanta. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. Now with with the senators, yes, folks. I am wonder. I am as confused as you are as why they are not bottom of the barrel. But here is the thing: that team, a young bucks, uh, they got over there. Um, yeah, there is talent in there. They have it. Young, they have it. It's just a management. B. Hey, you know what? Give them a couple of years. That 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 team will be something. It, so so long so long as things so long as things stay the course and um that and Mel stays the fuck away uh, stays the fuck out of the way. But they got Pierre Maguire as part of the uh, of the uh, quote unquote scouting team now. So shrug. I I think it I think Melnick's time is bet is better served um sending a fifteen page letter of apology to the LeBreton Flats. Fuck fifteen, it should be fifty. A mm-hmm. hundred. 
that should be a long succulent fucking blowjob is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, all all signs were all signs were pointing to the, to that deal be, to that deal being in the bag, but Melnick had to fuck it up because he's Eugene. Fuck you, Melnick. Mm -hmm. Um. But no, but seriously, the team should have been bottom of the barrel. Should have should should have been dead dead fucking last. But god damn, the, the talent, they snuck in some wins on the Habs, the Leafs, the US. They snuck in wins on everybody on all the teams in there this year. So there's talent there. So it's it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Now that now and of course, when it comes to the Canucks, um, first off, Benning gonna Benning again. Oh, Jim Benning gonna fuck things up, boy. Look, we we said this we said this last year, and we'll say it again. Every every time every time draft every time draft day comes in or the trade deadline, Benning should be Benning should be hog tied in the in a closet somewhere in the back. Blow up every phone in the vicinity of the fucking office slash arena. Mm -hmm. Give him bur do not give him burners. Do not give him anything. He is not allowed on the internet for that day unless he is unless one hundred percent absolutely necessary. He's he manages he manages to be an artiste in the new and interesting ways he can fuck things up with the Canucks. He he over manages, mm -hmm. and that is a problem. Would you say that he is the Dave Roberts of hockey? Ooh. I mm. That's a very good question. I, I don't know if that's a good comparison, but fuck, I'm not going to argue it either. <laughs> um but when it comes when it comes to, I um I had predicted that the that the Canucks weren't going to be going anywhere for a while because much like much like how New York is re is reeling from the loss of King Henrik, um, the Canucks ha are still are still reeling from the fact that for so long they were reliant on the Sedin twins. Yeah, and then they ended up retiring a few years ago, and they haven't been able to recover. Um, it doesn't it doesn't exa it doesn't exactly it doesn't exactly help that um, they. Because of how they got screwed with COVID, um, they are they have the they have the perfect excuse to try and stay the course, even though they need to start making moves. Because you know you know how it you know how it is with when it's easy to use that as an excuse to say, "Hey, we would have we would have gone far if we didn't if we didn't get fucked over by the pandemic." Right. I'm not. Say, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm saying that's the. That's it's just dumb enough for, for Benning to for Benning to make that argument. But now that we've gotten the, now that we've gotten the the teams that di the teams that didn't make it, let's talk about. Oh, the Oh, don't sugarcoat it. We got the losers out of the way. The losers. <laughs> All losers. Yeah, and um, I I am go I'm going for, I'm going from top to bottom, left to left to right on this. So, Let's you know this is coming. Let's talk about the Leafs. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now. Now. Cure. I feel for you and Steve Dangle and every Leaf fan out there. Okay. I, I do. I do. And I, you know what? I will be, I will be fair because, God damn it, you guys should have beaten us in Game Five and or Six. Mm -hmm. uh, I got you had us by the throat. As I was going to say, I have a official proclamation. Go ahead. Until they get their shit together and win a playoff series, I am no longer a Leafs fan. I don't give a shit what they do in the draft. I don't give a shit who they trade or who they sign. If they can win a playoff series, I will. I will care about them again. But as of now, I do not give a flying shit about them. See that apathy? That's what we were feeling. Because oh god, Mark Bergevin is fucking up the the Canadians again. No, who the fuck knew, right? Mm -hmm. But and and here's on the thing. paper, and here's, and here's on the thing. paper, 
you should have made it to at least the final. But here's the thing about the Leafs. A, you're damn right they choked. But I feel bad for you fans, though. Because you had, it's one of those, It's it's got to be fucking frustrating to see all this talent and none of them had a killer goddamn instinct. It's the fucking definition of insanity because they did this how many times already? I believe, according to Daniel and the boys, five years in a row? Mm -hmm. Yeah, five freaking times in a row. Again, definition of fucking insanity right there. I have and also, and also, those fans that say, "Oh, trade barter, trade magic." No, that's not no, going to solve. No, no, no. That is not going to solve shit. That's just going to raise one problem with another problem. Hell, I heard someone online saying, saying they want to trade Matthews for McDavid, and I'm like, "Are you fucking stupid? No, put your yeah, put your mother, put your motherfucking head back down, you stupid asshole." You know, monk, I'm gonna let him rant for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rare treat. Yeah. yeah. Because, again, you're replacing one problem with another problem. Okay, but it's fair that the Leafs lost, kind of, and, and then again, they, again, they had, they did not have Tavares for the rest of the series, and again, and Muffin was again injured. But it was both defensive and, ba- and two cases of bad passing. Remember, Matty? Game mm. five and six. You guys won via bad passing. They tried to get fancy. If the, if or whatever. If there is if there is any if there is any lesson any um moral as if as if we were watching a seventies cartoon to be to be learned it's twofold. <laughs> One, just because just because you're kicking ass does not mean that you can get that you can get comfy. Because they were they were at the they were so they were so at the top of the division that ev- that every pundit on Sportsnet was de- was dead set sure that they were going to be going deep this year. Much to the, much to the chagrin of the rest of Canada, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, but here's the thing: they could have, but they lacked the killer instinct. Mm-hmm. They lacked that moment of okay, fuck you, die. They had three shots to take us down, and they let us beat them. Look, I'm not, I'm not so much jaded as uh, listen. The miracle run, Habs earned it, and we'll obviously discuss that in, in a few teams, of course. But the Leafs had them by the ball, by the throat. They were choking them, and, and then, they were the one in the show. They had them in a sleeper. And then they and that the, then the crowd got involved, and the Habs awoke like like an angry a angry baby face that's about to make the biggest comeback ever. Oh wait, that's exactly what the fuck happened. Matty has one via a roll up. Pretty much, pretty fucking much. And the Leafs in this case were carrying cross. And now I'm salty again. And um, I will I will simply say that there that there is nothing that there is nothing that I can say that it, that it there is no there is no insult that I can that I can say no put down that I that I can utter no curse in any of the tongues of men that can eclipse having Hab's colors light up the CN Tower. <laughs> sure. On behalf of Hab's fans. We should apologize. We're not apologizing. We shouldn't be apologizing. But I am going to apologize because, yeah, obviously the CN Tower is is cheering for the for the one Canadian team left in the, in the playoffs, and that that's national unity, if nothing else. But at the same time, it's it's as if they they were to to, to, to go to Olympic Stadium and light it up in blue. So yeah, I, I, I get it, I get it. How much saltier can you can you and or Steve Dangle and or Sid Sixero get when you see those colors on your on your buildings? You know. I find it funny as hell that he was so that he was that Sid was so pissed off. He came back. <laughs> he came back to his old show ju- just to rant. 
Yeah, he was so pissed off of the collapse that he went on his own show, what, six minutes, obviously, you know, obviously for, 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 for the ha-has. <laughs> but I, but you know what? I, I get it. I get the anger. I get the frustration. I get why Kira is like, has that apathy. Because I had that apathy with my Habs. I, I know that feeling. Because I'm like, it doesn't matter how good we are, man. It's, it's, so long as Mark Bergevin runs our team. Fuck. So I get the apathy. I get the anger. I get why Steve Daniel didn't want to talk about the lease for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Do you think it was a coaching problem as well, Mildred? Or no? Um, I would. I would honest. I would. To be quite honest, I really. Th- I really think it's a culture problem. I think they. Yeah. Have, I think they have. I have. I have said for years the Toronto Maple Leafs are the Dallas Cowboys of hockey. Three. We didn't leave. The big reason why I say that is. Um, not too long ago, I, I remember, I remember going, I remember going through a, um, a AMA that Uche Winery was, do, was doing on, on Reddit regarding, hit, regarding his, regarding his experiences as a lineman. And someone had, someone had asked him about his, t- about his time when he spent a cup of coffee in Dallas. And he, um, he said, he had said that it was, that it was probably the, it was one of the more uncomfortable experiences of his life being at, being at the Cowboys training camp because of how culty it felt about, about how much of a big deal that is that it's, that it's going to be this big honor to uh, play for the Cowboys, the whole America's team and all, and all of that. Um, and the bit, the because Dallas is like, because, but here's the thing with Dallas. Yes. It's America's team. It is. The uh, the American football prototypical football team, the prototypical team, and you, there is that cult like status in the Maple Leafs because Toronto is Canada's media capital, or at least the Anglophone media capital. Mm-hmm. So every media is going to be there. The like you are literally you. It's literally you take the train from Montreal, Ottawa, or anyone within Montreal. You land at Union Station. You could literally walk up, walk up to Scotia Bank Arena to watch a, a hockey game. Like literally off the train, you wash your hands. You go over there. You're there, mm-hmm. literally. So, yeah, there is pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Yeah, the, but the big reason why the big reason why I say it's a why I say it's a culture problem is because. Because of because of that kind of status, um, I feel I feel like internally they're not being held to account as much as, as much as they should. Where you have, I know I know that you have massive critics in the form of Sid Sixero and um, Steve Dangle, but a lot of the fan base is far too apologetic regard regarding the Leafs, and we keep we keep hearing you keep hearing it every every year about. About how, at the start of every goddamn season, about how this is going to be the year, about how they've got the right intangibles, about how they're how they're going to get back to the cup. You hurt, you hurt, Steve, um, Sid Sixero a few years ago did like a did a seven minute rant where they were where they were proclaiming that they were cu- that they were going to be future cup contenders after winning a preseason game against the Senators. Even I'm not that stupid. This is I br- I bring this kind of thing up because it is completely emblematic of why I say the Leafs have a culture problem. The prob the problem is because of the fact that they're in the largest market, because of because of the fact that they have this repu- that they have this reputation as Canada's team, even though I'm pretty sure the rest of Canada can't stand them. There is still there is still that there is this there is not the pro, there is not the proper incentive to build a winning culture when they see that they're already win, winners by being media darlings that i think is that i think is the bi- is the biggest issue and while they shouldn't blow it up i get the feeling um there's going to be a lot of no. calls from sportsnet to have them start blowing shit up no you know what if i'm Cal Dubas the uh the the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs by the way if I'm Kyle Dubas, any sign early or any early sign of failure or 
laziness or any kind of sign that says I don't care or whatever, trade. Nobody's safe. If you know if you have if you if you do not have a no move clause in your contract, your head is on a your head is the sort of Damocles will be on your head. And if you do not show up to work and make sure that you don't show up, if this if you do not show up and be part of the team that is going that is going to be a world beater Braun Strowman like team next year, next season, you're fucked. You are traded immediately. Your uh, your ass is on the line next season for that failure. Can you wait? Can you trade people higher up or no, dude? Or are I, you I, just are I, you just Brandon saying that? Shanahan ought to tell Kyle Dubas they fuck up? They're on the trading block. Being a Toronto Maple Leaf, having that pressure should be a privilege, not a fucking right. Especially, especially put, since I want them to stop wasting John Tavares. And Marner and Matthews. At this point, if you are a weakness, you are liable to be treated to be traded. Mm-hmm. That's how I should see this season. That's why I'm, that's how I should see Brandon Shanahan and Kyle Dubas need to be get to come together and say, okay. Any sign of weakness, gone. And this will be an ongoing situation. Not just in the preseason, not just a... That team is a world beater. Top to goddamn bottom. If not, blow it the fuck up. Now, that... Br- that... T- that brings us to to the uh, to the other major under underachievers, the team the team that I have the team that I have nicknamed the two the um two man the the two man show, that being the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> How the fuck did you guys wind up number fucking two in the North? Let's be let's be honest. We know we know that we know the big we know the big problem here. It's the it's the fact that they it's the fact that they are hedging all of their bets on Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl. They shouldn't. See, the thing is, in in some sports, you can go very you can go very far in a sport like basketball. You can have one or two star players, and you're you've got a good chance at at making the at making a deep playoff run. In True. hockey, you need ten at minimum. At the very least, you need two good centers, a good wing, a, some goddamn good defense, and a, and a world beater goalie. Yeah, they don't need to be stars, but goddamn, they damn well be, be world beaters. If you if you'll notice the um the te- a lot of the teams that have a lot of the teams that have won the Stanley Cup over the last few years have been have been either have been either super teams or or teams that. Or teams that know how to use all of the pieces that they have on the board instead of being top heavy. And because because of the speed and because of the rotations of the NHL, relying relying on a couple names, even if they're big names, can can not cannot work. Um, I think he, I think even Gretzky has admitted this has admitted that kind of thing. I think he had said at one point that his st- his style of play wouldn't exactly work in a modern NHL. I'm vastly paraphrasing. Yeah. They got fucking swept. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of sweep, let's talk about the Blues. First off, Gloria is dead. Oh wait, 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 wait! I thought we we're gonna do the Jets. Um. We'll do the we're doing the Jets in the second round. We're reco- recovering the first. Oh, round. we're doing the playoff tree. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the Blues. Oh, oh, oh Blues! You, I feel bad for these guys. When they won the cup, I thought I thought that the misery was over. They're no, they would no longer be the most depressing franchise in hockey. Well, we're back to square one. Well, to be fair, they're not the most—they're not the most depressed. They're, they're making playoffs again, and that—that's not a bad thing. Now they're making playoffs, but in this case, take your series sweep and get the fuck out of my face. Bring out your dad. 
Bring out your dead. The big pro the big problem is um for the last for the last year or so they've had trouble getting stable goaltending. And it and so and so far it looks like that's a that's a trend that's going that's going to be continuing. Of course, it doesn't exactly help that they ended up going against the, one of the more one of the more aggressive teams in their division in the Avalanche. So, th so this was this was a match that that um they were having an uphill they were having an uphill to climb no matter what because you've got a team that isn't going to be very good defensively against a team that just that knows nothing but kill. But. And when it comes when it comes to the Blues, um, they have they have something, but they need but they need to start. But um, if they don't make some moves in the next few years, they they're get they're going to be in hell again. I'd like to I'd like to hope that they'll at least get that they'll at least get to the postseason in the next few years, over the next few years I should say. But it's looking precarious because a sweep is the is the kind of thing that make that makes ownership panic. Yeah. Oh, but then we get to oh god, I gotta talk about these guys. <sighs> okay, I, you guys have gone through your pain. Now I gotta go through mine and talk about Wild. the Minnesota Wild. Oh, uh, you know what? The Golden Knights beat the Shinola out of you, and I feel bad for your team. I do. I really do. It's another first round exit. I should be used to this pain, much in the same way that my brother Homer should be used to be deal with dealing with the eternal pain of being an Alaska Aces fan in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Um But I will I will say this. Car they met they managed to snag a they managed to snag a really good move by getting Kirill Kaprizov. He has been he has been phenomenal this year. I'll say this: the postseason stuff so far has been pretty decent. I mean, let's put it this way: buying out those two deep contracts is gonna is still gonna hurt them in oh, it's, dead cap space. It's gonna, it's, but, gonna st it's gonna sting. I do. I see. I see the fact that they bought that they bought out Suter and Parisi's contracts as the end yeah. of an era. Yeah, and that's what it is. And you know what? It's gonna sting. But it's like removing an appendix or a gallbladder. Mm -hmm. Yes, it sucks, and you're going to feel it for a while. But in the long run, smart move. I will say smart move on one condition. Resign Kaprizov. Fair enough. Um, he's... I don't. I don't think he. I don't foresee him asking asking for too much, especially 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 since that especially since it'll be his second year. Could be one of those cases. Give me a couple of years to prove it. Deals like all right. Give me give me a fair. What give me what you think is fair. Give me the time to prove it. If if it turns out great, by next the negotiation, you'll pay me a lot more, or you'll pay me a lot less. Mm -hmm. Now. The bit, the, I will say, I will say that I, I would rather, I would rather the Wild lose to the Golden Knights than lose to the Canucks. Yeah, the the Golden Knights, up until uh, they were they they met up with you know my team, uh, they they were they were looking like world beaters. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it yes it it's. A first round, another first round exit stings, but this one doesn't sting as as much as as much as it did last time. Although the shit poster and me want wanted the Wild to win simply for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, believe me, believe me, I wanted Vegas to choke before I. In the next series, I wanted the team that eventually lost to the Knights to face the Habs, if for nothing else, the old rivalry. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Now, will now um, I'm, I want to shift gears and co and cover and cover the fir and cover the first round on the uh, on the other side of the bracket. So we, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play. Let's laugh at the pens. <laughs> you, oh. still, you 
still think Jack Johnson is a decent player, you fucking idiot. <laughs> what I saw with what I saw with the pen, what I saw with the pens was their playoff window slamming right the fuck shut. Ain't no amount of Sidney Crosby will get you out of that first round, pal. <laughs> mm-hmm. And <sighs> here's here's the thing: you either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Jim or Rutherford, you know the, the meme. Jim Rutherford has become the has become the vi- has become the villain and um when it come when it comes to when it comes to their star goalie um avoid major yeah, his, highways his glove hand, <laughs> his glove hand. Have, have any of you seen his glove hand I can't I can't even find it on a milk carton folks I used to I I will be the first to admit I do not know how to skate so I I T doubles claim that I'm a bad Canadian so Kevin Owens and I have something in common. Yay. But I used to play a lot of ball hockey or I- indoor hockey. Mm-hmm. I played goalie. Now, I'm not going to, going to claim uh, falsehoods on this show. Because that, that would be wrong. But I am fairly certain that when it came to clutch, I had a better glove hand than that poor son of a bitch. Yeah, and... <laughs> Like I, like I said, it it probably would be best to travel in the dead of night because because the Inzers want blood. <laughs> and new trees at the front of the damn line. Well, the the night it happened, he ended up posting the same. He ended up posting the appropriate Simpsons meme of "Wait, stop! I have garbage." Yep. <laughs> um, especially since now the. Because because of that, I the big pro, the big problem is over the last few years we've seen we've seen um we've seen Rutherford regress into Carolina mode where he's getting where he's getting a bunch of gritty guys for a, for a coaching tree that has relied on speed for the past few years. Mm-hmm. But they're still pl- still trying to play a speedy game with slower guys. It doesn't work, and now they're now they're paying for it. And pretty much, unfor- and because because of and unfortunately, until they get rid of J until they get rid of Jr. I don't see them going anywhere. Nope. Now, but th- but um, but then we then we get to the o- then we get to the other part of that pairing, and once again, I have to invoke the meme. Congratulations, Washington! You still can't make it past the second round. They didn't even get past the first round. Oh, you know what? I don't feel bad for them. I don't. They got they got Ovi's goddamn cup. Now pay up, bitches. They got Ovi's cup. Now they're de- now they're de- they're still dealing with pay- they're still dealing with payment, especially especially since they're still dealing with last year being a case of steamed caps. <laughs> Look, I love a good Simpsons meme and goddamn steam ham. Okay, enough, enough of the steam ham. <laughs> enough, goddamn it, enough. Put it in the goddamn bed. I won't leave my good Simpsons alone, goddamn it. The big, the bi- first, there are two big problems that they're having to deal with. Um, the first is they took, they took because of the fact they didn't want to pay the coach who got them the cup. They showed him the door and. And now they have to rely on great on the brand value version of of a head coach. The second thing is they are get, they are in the first stages of cap hell because in a, they had to deal with a flat cap year. The cap the cap is probably not rising as as much as they would have liked. Thank and you, COVID. They've got a lot of really really bad contracts. So you. Welcome to hell, Washington. We've kept the seat warm for you, and if you listen closely, you can hear Doku screaming in the distance. <laughs> Bitch, Doku, if you're listening to this, buddy, I know you want to punch me for this, but you know I'm right. And you, and that really makes you want to punch me. 
that's gonna happen. It's it's gonna be like all of like another Simpsons meme. It'll be one day you'll you'll be like Lenny in the Simpsons, and you're gonna get punched in the back of the head. I don't know. I like freaking nowhere. Oh, I oh I know. Wouldn't, it wouldn't drinking be- a beer or milk or whatever. I'm pr- I'm pretty sh- I'm I'm pretty sure I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to g- look. If you get, look, if I get hit with a chair, at, at the very least, don't do a Lance Storm style chair shot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. shout out OSW. Um, but another t- another team that ha- another team that has had th- that has had their window slammed shut, and I think they really still de- start need to start rebuilding, is Smashville. Smashville yeah. has been smashed, and it's. And um, first off, I do th- I I'd say light a, light a candle for Pekka Rene. He is eternally too good right now, and at the at the end of the season, he announced his retirement. Another man that that deserved a cup didn't get a chance to, to even sniff it. Mm-hmm. Um, but he but the bi- the big pro- the big problem is one. When it comes to their players, that's not really the issue. The issue for them is coaching, especially whoever whoever's coaching their power play tactics. They have they have had the they have had the worst they have had possibly the one of the worst if not the worst power plays in the entire league. And the team was so bad at the power play that you could be as undisciplined as you could. And chances are, you be you be getting away with murder because no one's gonna is gonna score on your ass. Or if they do, they you they got fucking lucky. Now, like like I said, if they if they can get if they can get some if they can get some better coaching, they may have they may have a shot. But um, it takes a lot of humble pie to admit you fucked up on that kind of level. At the very, at the very least, we won't hear those "Hey, you suck" chants anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Um, although, um, at the very least, could you could you at least could you at least win one so that so that Miro can be happy about it? Please, we could use a happy Miro. Mm-hmm. Have you seen what he's done to poor to poor Brian Pillman Jr.? He murderized him. <laughs> oh, that cold. Dead cold case files dead in the ground. He is a dead pillman. Not real, not literally. It, that was a bad joke. Yeah, that but was. you get the idea. Yeah, but you I... get the idea. <laughs> um, Miro's pissed, and he's about to destroy people. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the Florida Panthers, I'll be I'll be honest. I was I was surprised they even made it to the show. Like they. I I had no I had no I had no high hopes for them at the start of the season. They did get they certainly improved. Um, Dude, they were second in the in the division behind the Hurricanes. Yeah, they had a good team. That's why I'm I'm not gonna shit on the I'm not gonna shit on the Panthers too much because they don't deserve it. The fact of the matter is they ju- they just ha- they just happen to get beat get beat out by the by their. Um, br- by their blood bro- by their blood brother this time around. There was no there was no real collapse or anything like that. It's just uh-huh. Tampa was the, the this, better is, team. this is literally the number two seed taking on the number three seed and the number three seed wound up winning the whole kin caboodle. Mm-hmm. So there's not too much in the shame department. John Cooper just uh, did a bang up job to uh but whipping up a team that could whip that could beat anybody. Mm-hmm. They ran into that brick wall. They are. I don't think this should be a padding move. The fact that they've made the playoffs at number two in their division should be a sign of, even if it's it's different divisions, all this stuff. It should be a sign of, hey, something's doing right. Let's keep that momentum going. Mm-hmm. Don't change too much. Add to add add it or subtract if you need to, but don't. There's no need to blow anything up. Yeah. Then we then we get to the, then we get to the rep. Next we have the round of eight, and we'll start with, we'll start once once again on the once again on the other end, and let's talk let's talk about Winnipeg, you idiot. <laughs> Thank you, Winnipeg. Thank you 
for that wonderful We the North shirt. We spelt in French, by the way. Just to be a little cheeky. Je- je- cheeky. <laughs> Swept by the hat. Look. We, like, as a Habs fan at this point, we're going, okay, we've humiliated the Leafs, we've done our jobs, we've made the memes, we're in free money territory again at this point. Mm -hmm. We're thinking, okay, Habs win, it'll be in six or seven, this will be another series. That's what I said, I I had Habs in seven. I'll be frank. Mm -hmm. I I was one of those, okay, I'll I'll pick Habs, but I, I had that. Cautious optimism about it. And obviously the uh, Shifley hit fucked you guys over hard. Which there, there's been a lot of discussion talked about that hit. We don't need to add to it. I think pretty much everything has been said about that. Yeah. Also, Shifley, you're a fucking idiot for that. Mm-hmm. And that, this is not me as a half fan. I'm, I, I, if this is the Leafs, I'm saying the fucking same fucking thing. Shifley, you're a fucking idiot for that hit. But you lost to us in four. Something about the Atlanta curse, right? Yeah. I'm like, yo, like, could, could, could you guys, like, you guys were world beaters against the Oilers, for God's sakes. You guys... Look good. You you guys, there is such a thing, folks, as too much time off in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But these guys woke up way the fuck too late. And one of the one of the big problems is once again, top he- top heavy teams have a short shelf life. And apparently, the short the shelf life was the second round. Yeah. And because be, they have the thing is they have the, they have the same problem that Bo- they have the same problem that Boston has and we'll get and we'll get to them later of putting of putting all their eggs on their first line and the problem when, the problem when you do that is you can't you can't run an entire game with just your first line especially not in the playoffs you're gonna burn yourself out fast and they're current they're currently pay, they're currently paying for it so i'm not saying blow it up but get yourself some get yourself some non first line support for once get your ass is on the trading floor that's for sure mm-hmm. because do you, you have a good, a good amount of good players that could you could easily make another playoff run but something's a mess i can't put my finger on it but uh Tell Shifley not not to be a fucking idiot. That that's that's step one. That would be like asking Nazem Kadri not to try and kill somebody. <laughs> well, Nazem Kadri's another fucking idiot too. Mm-hmm. He's your problem now, Colorado. Speaking of, yeah, let's get to the Avalanche. Oh, folks, folks. As soon as the Habs won, my dad and I were going. You know, where we were talking about this. Flurry versus the Habs. We were thinking, okay, Flurry versus the Habs that's, versus Price. That's a goalie battle. But I want the Avs to make one of them to make the, 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 the semifinals. I really did. Folks, Nordiques versus Habs for the right to go for the Cup. That's pretty much what it boiled down to. Forget about who, which one's the easier team. Okay, technically the Avalanche were, but there's that history there. And Google the um, uh, the the Easter Friday, the the Good Friday Massacre. Uh, <laughs> your, geeks, your geeks Habs on YouTube. Uh, there there are pl- there are plenty of video out there to, to tell you the history. Of the former Quebec Nordiques. Secret Base did so, a video on Secret Base did a video on it as well. That's one I yeah, that's one I would recommend actually. There was so there was a big part of me that said this need this needs to happen. But of course the Knights did what they had to do, but not some cadres a fucking idiot for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. I I'll let you do the rest of the analysis. 
but the ha while the the Habs seem to seem to be spending more time being a playoff nuisance than some than a team that really wants to push for um, playoffs. Now, granted, they are no they are not the poop emoji that they were a few years ago. You have that you have that going for you. Ew. But at the but at the same t at the same time, um, it feels it feels like they spend more time being the being the being um being the being the troll of the postseason more than anything else. Dude, <laughs> Az versus Habs would have been the trolliest semifinal matchup ever. Oh, it oh it would have, and I the Habs were were a bunch of trolls too, folks. Mm -hmm. We played spoiler. We we understood what our role was. Spoiler. Yeah. So, yeah, Avs, you did what you could. Believe me. Now, grant, granted, this is another case where they were just up. They were just up against a a better a um a supposed better team. There's also the there's also the fact that I I really think the I really think Colorado needs to get some defense going. So I feel I feel like, I feel like they play aggressive way too much. A little bit. I mean, obviously, have you seen now some Cadre? Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I have. It is. You switched Cadre to evil. Mm -hmm. oh. Here's your problem. Oh yeah, but then then we get to then we get to the Bo the Boston Bruins. Oh, uh, Cure, you still there, bud? Yeah. Boston's up. Let's laugh at him. <laughs> Fuck you, Boston! <laughs> <laughs> Folks, now the great many things that we'll we'll put we'll bring a Hab and Leaf fan together, but Boston suffering is one of those things. Boston suffering in any sport brings brings nations together. Oh yeah. Well, that I can that and um that and New York. And 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 any time any time the Yankees get their ass kicked, the entire the entire the entirety of North America laughs. Pretty much. <laughs> um. But when but when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to Boston, the f you know how you know how I said the Leafs have a culture problem. Boston's got a fucking culture problem, bud. Holy crap! I. I choose to believe that they are still dealing with karma from the way the Boston sports media treated Tuka Rask a year ago. Oh, oh, someone, someone should have went to every member of the sports media for Tuka Rask. Being a human being and had them, uh, had a baseball bag, like the, the, the Santana and Ortiz, they had like a, Baseball bat, the, Yan the, um, the Yankee blackjack. Yeah, the blackjack. That have that upside every head of everyone roasting to crap for leaving the, the 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 playoff bubble last year because mm -hmm. one, he's a human fucking being, and anyone who played in that bubble will tell you how fucking tough it was, especially when it went with a deep cup run. That shit was not easy. So Boston eating a bag of shit. It's unfortunate. Culture problem, yes. Media problem. There's your karma, fuckers. Eat it. Eat your crow. Eat all of it. Yeah. Actually, matter of fact, I think I got a got a crow button somewhere. Hold on. I think I have a crow button. I should have a crow button. There we go. That's damn good crow. <laughs> a little heavy on the humiliation, but still damn good. Mm. Bro. Because because of once again, the problem I have said how many times over the last over the last five years have I said that the that the Bruins need that the Bruins need to stop be not to stop stop being a one line team. And once once again yeah. once again they're paying for it. I keep I keep saying I keep saying it, but they, but look as lo as long as people keep falling into this trap, I'm gonna keep saying it until until someone t until someone t forces me at gunpoint, and by gunpoint I mean threatens me with a howitzer at minimum. Because and the 
the other the other big problem is 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 um thinking that you're going to constantly get bailed out by Tuka Rask. And now which now you're paying for that as well because as I understand it um Rask Rask, wanna, Rask wants to fuck off. He's a And you blame him. Yeah, he is entering the UFA market. And Although, although um, it may be tricky to get some takers because he di because he is going to be out for a chunk of next year, um, dealing dealing with um, recovering from surgery. Give him a fair deal. Let him deal. Let, give him a fair deal. Let him heal. Win Stanley Cups makes yeah. sense to me. But I um, I would I would not be I would not be I wouldn't be surprised if he if he ends if um the boss if the entire the entire city of Boston um, pa packs up his bags for him to, tr to try and get him out because the big, pr the unfortunate thing is that ever since last year, he's become the scapegoat for why Boston hasn't, didn't go anywhere. And he shouldn't because it's not just him. It's a fucking team. Mm -hmm. So you don't like Boston? Chase your, chase your golden boy away. See how, the, how that feels when you fucking lose in the first round again. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see Boston go, going all that going all that going all that far. And no, uh, they're, they're, they're they're still salty on Rask being a human being. And you know what? Fuck them. Mm. Oh, 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 oh! That's Castaneo just popped in my head. Oh, look at that! One of these days, Toronto wins the first round against Boston, and Tuchka Rask is in net for Toronto. Can you imagine a Steve Dangle video is him screaming to Karask as a leaf? <laughs> Ooh, I would <laughs> that. How much oh, the irony. The irony in that statement I just said. That's a big cap hit. Can they even afford Rask, even on a short term? Uh, that's, why, that's why I said it was an idea in my head. Mm -hmm. it, it was course. really hilarious, though, right? Dude, if they could swing it even for one season... I could. There, there may be a point where Tukaras shuts out the Habs out of the playoffs again because their the Habs are going to make it again. But if it makes, but if it makes Boston eat crow, I, I, I am perfectly. I may be in the minority, but I'm perfectly fine making that sacrifice. I, I have, I have no problem sleeping with an enemy to slay a greater one. There you go. There you go. Um. But next we have next we have the next we have good old fashioned our good old fashioned favorite bunch of jerks. Keep coming to our game. Keep coming to our game. <laughs> one of the two <laughs> one, the one of the two teams that won shit poster of the week awards. <laughs> for, the, for those un, for those unaware, somebody at somebody at ESPN really fucked up this week during the expansion draft. Hi and, Disney, fuck you, Disney. And accidentally, co accidentally called the Carolina Hurricanes the Carolina Panthers, and both the <laughs> Hurricanes and the Panthers um, Twitter accounts ran with it for the shit posting. Oh, oh that is that is, that is <laughs> botchamania level of. Ladies and gentlemen, we must quote the tree again. In new fashion, it's time to dub our bold cow of the week. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. I no, can, I, you're cannot, not. I cannot tell a lie. Well, actually, I can. I just choose not to this time. But <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the the Hurricanes did it. Did a did a color swap with their logo to have it have the same colors as the as the, the Carolina Panthers. Panthers and even and the Panthers. <laughs> And the pa I only learned this, this about a couple hours ago, but the Panthers they played along. Yeah, which good sports, everybody. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that is, again, that is botchamania level of dumb. Well, hey, well, hey, ESPN. Million dollar move, two dollar shot. <laughs> well, let's let's not forget that um. The current, the current, the current identity of the Carolina Panthers. It not pan. Fuck! I made the same. I made the same. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll put my motherfucking head back down. 
but no. the the hurricanes are the hurricanes current identity is built on shit posts. You guys you guys are aware of the story of how bunch of jerks became became a rallying cry for them, right? Yep. For those un, for those unaware, when when um Dundon took over ownership and took and dealt with the, and dealt with the family drama with the previous owner of the of the hurricanes um he start he decided he decided to start integrate to start integrating more event like th- event like things to help to help get to help um establish a new identity for the canes and one of them was ado- was things like uh was things like basketball celebrations or um adopting the skull chant Ooh. as well as well as as well as a um as well as having somebody spin a hurricane a hurricane alarm before games you know kind of kind of like how the vikings have have some lo- have some local guy in in uh, minnesota sound the yaller horn um <laughs> and it it works gr- it works great for connecting with your fan base brian burke didn't think so he he saw wait wait that wait, wait. He- for those wondering wait brian burke that is correct. It does not matter what his name is. <laughs> You're on my soundboard. Fuck it. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> but he he de- he decided to he decided to call the Hurricanes a bunch of jerks, and they decided that to... shit. And the, and the Carolina Hurricanes saw that, marketed it, put it on a T-shirt, made a shitload of money. Mm-hmm. Because because um. Well, Bur- Burke, is, I res- I respect what Burke has done in hockey, but at the same time, he does come off as as old man yells at cloud a little bit too much, especially yep. especially when it comes especially when it comes to the fact that he has a bit of a fetish for North American boys. That came out. Brian, mm, Brian Burke. Why does that name sound? Um, Matty, if I remember correctly, didn't he also GM the Leafs at one point? Yup. Yeah, and it went. And nowhere. he's a hockey analyst up in Canada between pretty much all three major networks. When you think about, it, or at least the major sports ones, TSN, Sportsnet, and and CBC Sports, he's made the rounds. Yeah, yeah. thanks for thanks for thanks for not giving us Tyler Tyler Sagan and Dougie Hamilton jerk off. No, <laughs> tell us how you really feel their uh, their cure. Mm-hmm. No, I would, but you should already did it for me. <laughs> Fair enough. When it but when it comes to the when it comes to the hurricanes, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shit on them. Um, they no. still they still need to get goal they still need to get some proper goaltending. That's been a problem for, with them for a while. Yeah, and but, the and the light game pretty much took advantage of that hole. But dude, second round gave gave Lightning a, a couple of good games in there. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's they, not bad at all. They'll be back. I can, I can guarantee you that. Be back. They'll be back, and then John Cooper's gonna t- get a- get terminated. Uh, no, not out of the job, just terminated, terminated style. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why they came there, but what the fuck? <laughs> no, John, if I remember correctly, didn't Cam Ward retire or something? I think, I think, I think so, and it's unfortunate. Let, let, let me let me Google it. Let me let, let me do the, the Google. All right, Cam Ward, former professional hockey player, hockey goaltender. Uh, yep, he was uh, playing career twenty nineteen, so it's a very recent retirement. Ah, okay then. Yeah, I do. I do know about this. He, um, it, it had, it had to deal with, um, with just, with just mounting injuries, especially concussions. Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that he retired. That's because he didn't, he didn't even sniff his thirties yet. He was in his late twenties. No. This guy retired young. He was actually he joined the Blackhawks in this last season. Mm-hmm. I think he won a cup with the with the old five crew of the Hurricane. He did have a cup, yeah. At least he got that. Mm-hmm. But, st- but still, that's that's way that's really young to be retiring. Hey, a couple of world ch- cups, a couple of the world championships here and there. You know what? I actually know metal record. Like, does he have a Stanley Cup? Should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has. Okay, he, he he has. That's a good news. Yeah. 
now yeah we- first first yeah. first goaltender since Patrick Roy it's Patrick Roy uh, as a rookie for he won the cup as a rookie so yeah he has a cup yep his name's on the his name is on the mug you know what early retirement yes but when you've done what you all but win an Olympic gold medal hey that's a career bud mm-hmm. now what now um this brings us to the to the to the first part of the of the of the fi- of the um co- of the what would be the conference finals except there weren't conferences this year. Yeah, they 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 awarded the, the, the conference final trophies, but there were uh, in all in- intents and purposes semifinals. This was a legitimate tournament, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So this this is gonna oh. Uh, you're talking about the the knights uh, first, right? Yeah, um, folks, <laughs> folks, all the effort, all the asking, all everything else, and it doesn't matter because the whole Vegas Golden Knights season is summed up by one thing, one play, one meme off skate in net. Yeah, flurry, fucked up. Hard. We have, we have, we. I feel, I feel like we have set a, re- we have set a new record in the NHL because I think this is the fastest I've seen a team go from it go from fan from league wide league wide darling to lol cow because now yeah they made the they made the Stanley Cup Finals in their first year. Which which is they had the team to do it too. They had the team to do it. They had the mom- they and they had the momentum and they kept winning. Now, unfortunately, they unfortunately they ha- they happened to be against a team that was ve- that was very very good at neutralizing speed, which was at, which was their best their best asset. But and a- after that they after that they com- they complained that they that they, that they got jo- that they got jobbed out, they got jobbed out. Then, yeah. So here's. Years, that that's the tricky part of them. Obviously, you, you did weird to say this to say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, year after year after that, they go up against, they go up against the Sharks, and yet and yes, there was there was there was some ref puck involved. No, um, there was, but at, but at the same at the same at the same time. The, at the same time, they ended up play, they ended up playing things so, they ended up playing things soft on ma- on majors, which you don't fucking do. But last year was the was the real Nadir, and that was where that was where I realized, oh shit, they're going full low cow. They were acting ridiculously arrogant. They were ridiculous. They were they were, chir- they were chirping. They led uh, they led those two playoff appearances. Poison the well, and I I honestly think I honestly think that th- that this year was karma because you can't be you can't be striding around like the big swinging dick in the room and not ex- and not expect the hockey gods to notice and they have can and they you- have and, and and the best way to know is Mark Andre Fleury playing the puck and fucking up he has. Beca- he has de- he has descended to he has um, regressed into meme form. It didn't exactly help that that there was that whole drama with it with his aid with his agent trying to stir shit up with the sword picture. But the but ri- but when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to Vegas, um. They are bored. They are. I'm not going to say that they have a culture problem as bad as bad as the as bad as the Bruins or the or the Leafs, but they do have one other problem. We were all. I I distinctly recall all of us being somewhat puzzled when in the when in the middle in the middle of a playoff push, they drop Gerard Gallant and replace him with Peter DeBoer. Good luck. You'll need it. And um, myself, and I'm pretty sure everyone in San Jose was in pe- was in panic mode. And <laughs> I, I, do, I do remember seeing some Knights fans say, saying that, "Hey, Pe- 
Peter DeBoer's a good coach. We'll get we'll we'll get back to the playoffs. And yeah, you will. But the problem is, <laughs> DeBoer is a choke artist because he doesn't know how to adjust for his opponents. See, actually, hey, one more judgment than DeBoer. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, wait, you adjusted right there, too. Uh, Kira, did you adjust? Hang on, let me, hang on, let me adjust my fist. <clears throat> okay. There you go. There you I go. Have now done, sure. I, have, I have now done more adjusting than Peter DeBoer did did in that series against, against the Habs because the key the key thing is they were one because of because of that cockiness, which they weren't at the very least they weren't as chirpy as they were last year but no. there was but there was still that degree there was still that degree of arrogance and the and the gods will the and if you have that if you have that kind of hubris if you fly too close to the sun the gods will strike you down and they have and here's the thing this is a team that lost their they faced a team in the Habs that lost their head coach due to covid for a good solid 2 weeks mm-hmm. The assistant was coaching the team, and he did more adjusting than you fuckers did. So, I know that I know that there's going to be the temptation to blo- to panic and blow things up. Don't. They just, shouldn't. No. Just get. Um, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what you do with with uh, with Mark Andre Fleury, but get rid of Peter DeBoer. As long as yeah. you keep having him in there, you are not sniffing a, a Stanley Cup. I'd I'd say yeah, keep Flurry the gold tanding tandem. Like they used to back up, and that backup put Vegas back back into the series. So do what you can to keep both of those two in there and split the duties this season. Make sure both of them stay warm, so to speak. Because the the last thing the last thing you need is. For- is for Mark Andre Fleury to become is become a meme again, um, and the <laughs> that too late that 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 misplay that that allowed us to that allowed us to, to gain momentum. That's a meme right there, Monk. You know that. Oh, I I know. I'm just I'm just saying it's I'm just saying um at least at least try and cauterize the wound before you before you completely bleed out. No, yeah, there's still time. You're supposed to. It's sim. It's sim. You work in, You you've done hospital work. You know how this is. Apply pressure to the wound. I mean, uh, like, like, yeah, dude. I sold TV, uh, t- t- uh, TV rentals. <laughs> no, I do have. I do have. I I do have. I did have first day training. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Now, when it comes now, when it comes to the Islanders. This is another case oh. where I'm I'm not gonna sh- I am not going to shit on them because dude that game that series went to seven and that last game at Nassau Coliseum was a banger. There is no shame in that game. You can't shit on that team. No, in in fact, in fact I am at, I'm actually pr- I'm actually proud of how the the uh, the New York Islanders are one of are one of the great su- are one of the great success and recovery stories. Of the last few years, because they were dead in the they were dead in the water during 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 those years at Barclays Center, largely because of the fact that one, um, the Islanders their 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 fan base is in Long Island, Barclays yeah. Center is in Brooklyn. That's an hours that's an hours drive, and that's assuming you're not going to be get on a good day. That's assuming and, you're not going to get fucked by New York traffic, which you are. Yeah. So that's good traffic. On, that's traffic on a good day. I will say this: when the Habs won, and it was up to Game Seven with the Lightning and Islanders, mm-hmm. there was a big part of of everybody that wish, "Come on, Isles, Isles need to win this." Habs versus Islanders at Nassau Coliseum and the Bell Center with with. with even at twenty five to five uh twenty five hundred to five thousand people in attendance in Montreal. Dude, the loudness of both buildings, good freaking lord. Yeah. The big the big reason why I say the why I say the Isles are a great are a great success story is yeah. ever since ever since they got new ownership, they have they have the they have been the exact opposite of teams like the Sabres. The owners stay out of the way. They are they um 
are very are very are very um hands on with hands on when it comes to the fans including che including cheering with them um in with it um during get during get during games and shit and shit talking opponents no oh, yeah and oh. because and because of that the the fan the fan base in long island has all has a lot of hope it and further furthermore the smartest the, there are two there are two th the two things that they've that they've done that were incredibly smart in this one no more charles wang two no more garth snow garth snow has garth snow has been has been consigned to, has been consigned to take the black and sit and sit atop the wall Maybe he'll have maybe he'll have a better ending than Jon Snow. Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ooh! That's a deep cut right there. Mm. I mean, Game of Thrones ain't that deep, but still, it's st it's still it's still a very raw wound. I'll put it that way. It is. It is. To be okay. fair, no mm -hmm. Islanders. I think at this point, the fact that they, they had a deep cup run. I mean, that's rehab 101. At this point, keep it going. Like minor adjustments if you need to. There's no cap hell in sight. At this point, keep going. Like I want to see the Isles make another deep cup run. That's how and good that team was this year. The ultimate culmination is the fact that, um, for one, um, everybody's seen everybody's seen reason. They're no, they are. They are not going back to Barclays, obviously because the, um, because the lease because their lease ran out. Because Barclays Center is it, as far as I'm aware, is only good for two things: hockey, not sorry, not hockey, basketball, and wrestling. Pretty I much. Thought, I, thought you, I thought you were going to say live concerts. Well, well you know, yeah, it, yeah, it, but it, it, any it, venue it, is good for concerts. It's not that hard to do. Let's put it this way: it's it's NXT's home away from home. If they ever want to go do Barclays again, mm -hmm. though, if they want at this point, I would love to see AEW in the Barclays Center. That that's a good building for wrestling. To be fair, anyway, but no, they have a new building in Long Island, which is about the same situation as it would be on Barclays, but it's still on Long Island. So. It's your shrug and go. It's still better than nothing. It's much. It's in Belmont, which is significantly closer. Yeah. And yeah, so, it is gonna. It is gonna be a few years, and the, and um, I think they're. I think they're still gonna be using. Um, I think they're still gonna be using their old stomping grounds as a as a temp home, until because it's gonna it's gonna take about I don't know two, two or so years for the for the uh, for their new stadium in Belmont to get built. But at the at the very least, it'll be one it'll be one that's more built for hockey, and one that's closer yeah. to the fan base. It's a bit of a drive, but it's not an but it's but um not by much. It's it's better than nothing at this point. Mm -hmm. oh. oh boy, here we go. Then we get to then we get to the then we get to the finals. Let's get, let us get to the Clarice S. Campbell Bowl champion, Montreal Canadiens. Wait, wait a minute. No, but and for those who don't know, the Clarence Campbell Trophy, the uh, Campbell Bowl, is awarded to the winner of the Western Conference Final. So, let me get this straight. Yep. Montreal is the so far, if I remember correctly. The only team to won both of those. Both the Prince of Wales and the Clarence Campbell Trophy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Go quiet. And you know what? If and you know what? That is the trolliest thing I've ever seen, and I don't. I'm like, yo, that's a bragging right, right there. Mm -hmm. that, I never has a bragging right worthy of a legacy team like uh, of like the Habs if I've ever I've ever heard one. That never happened before in the history of the NHL. No, that's that was the structure of this week's bra of this year's bracket because, well, shit hit the fan the last year. I don't. I doubt it's going to happen again. Though. This this is this is an absolute oddity, rarity, and this will not happen again. But you know what? The fact that it even happened, hell yeah, 
Hell yeah, I'm down with that. What'd you say to Montreal? To I'm amazed you haven't made a T-shirt about that fact yet. Wait a minute, mate. So would you say that Montreal is a triple crown winner then? I let's not push the wrestling stuff too much. Yeah, I know, I know. I just, I'm just making fun. Mm-hmm. No, no, it, 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 no shame on the game. No shame on that game at all. All right. Let's. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I. There, there's no fucking way we made we made that deep of a cup run without the Leafs choking, the Jets not showing up, and Mark Andre Fleury being a meme for a couple of for a couple of games. Basically, just pure dumb luck, and and if, and, and, and someone luck, and someone made a deal, and a team built a team that on paper doesn't look like it was built for a deep playoff run. But here's the thing. You underestimated the Montreal Canadiens. I was going to say, who made a contract with the bunny cat? Well, we, we not that we know of. <laughs> or if Corey Perry did that, that's like Jesus Christ. And no wonder he's 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 hurting. But uh, I mean, Monk, you could join in on this conversation. I'm, I'm obviously yeah. taking it over. Uh, big, <laughs> I think. When it comes now, um, obvi- obviously, obviously, um, you they had a ge- they have a generational talent in Car- in Carey Price, and first off, I do want I do feel the need to punt to punch to to punch um Habs management for get for giving their entire fan base a heart attack this week. No, oh, you know what? I I get the feeling that there was some galaxy brain play going on. Obviously Seattle did it went for the the person they went the the player that they went to and ignored Carey Price, which I mean, you could have pulled a flurry and I, people were very much reminded of what happened when they they did not protect that when Pittsburgh did not protect Flurry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, go <laughs> There was a couple of tense filled gay days, and then people saying, "Well, look, it's not likely it's going to happen." I was like, "We breathe easier." And then when the news said, "Okay, the the, the, the picks are in," Price would have left. Price would have been able to leave already. He's not. We're safe. Okay. But it, the way the way I'm reading it, it's like they they wanted to protect a couple more players that could that Seattle could have picked. But Price went, look, I'm a deep key, a cap hit if they pick me up. And I'm hurting, so I'm not playing for their for, I'm not playing for a while. Put me up. I'll yeah. I'll waive it for this. Price made the sacrifice to keep a couple of players that the Habs desperately needed to keep. The way I'm reading things anyway. Mm-hmm. So But the only thing I can do here is shrug at this point. Yeah. I'd I'd say I'd say the I'd say the big reason why that why the haves made it as far as they did is two is twofold. One, you had a lot of you had a lot of teams that just completely underestimated them. They're thinking yeah. the haves they they're they're a cakewalk. We'll be able to deal with them. Whereas the uh, here's the problem: were, the haves were tree mm-hmm. brought it up in his uh, in his uh, wrap up his uh, haters guide to the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. It they, they don't look like much, but you look at all the players that are in there. There is Stanley Cup experience in that team. May not look like much, but Corey Perry, Shea Weber. There's a few. There's a few players in there that, on paper, you don't think, "Oh, they're not Stanley Cup caliber," and yet they are. They have that experience. There's guys from the Golden Knights from the uh, who had that deep cup on the first year. They they had Toffoli for. There's there's something for you. Uh, you know Suzuki, Eric Stahl, Eric Stahl. There's experience in this. So, grin of generosity is like it looked like an old boys club, but no, like they found a magic ingredient in mixing up some veterans with some monster with with some great performances. Not everything clicked, but I said this to my dad, and I'm gonna say it here. Cole Caulfield, the minute it, it, the, the 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 year he keeps this up, the minute his contract is up, he is getting paid because he fucking performed for that team this se- this off season, this this playoff run. 
it took the Leafs to choke the 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 the, the Jets to not show up at all in Vegas to become a meme. But outside of the Jets series, seven, four games, six games, five games, all all of them were series or, or performances that make you think, oh shit. On paper, we should not have made the playoffs. Uh, and I'll be the first one to admit that. It's like, dude, this is a miracle run. And yeah, you're right. And we'll fucking take it. Mm-hmm. We will fucking take that. We will, we will take that Clarence Campbell trophy. We'll take that bowl. We'll, we'll take the shirts. We'll take the memes. The way I see it, at the end of this C series, I said, Ducharme needs to stay out of the uh, out of the, the thing and mix it up more because at this point, just changing things up was the key here. Was the key here, and they didn't adjust enough. But the role of the Habs this off season was to play spoiler. Leafs were so were were pegged on paper to make a deep cup run. We made them look they choke. We made them look like chokers in seven. Jets were 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 supposed to make the Leafs sweat. We made them cho- We made them. We swept them. Golden Knights should have w- mopped the floor with them. Tyler Toffoli with Tyler Toffoli with the dagger in Game Six mm-hmm. at home. At home, I saw that overtime goal. And I felt something I have not felt with the Habs in a very long time. Hope and joy. Literal joy. Jumping out of my... Because I've always been... Okay, it's the Habs, but they're going to choke. They, they have a management team and a coaching staff that doesn't allow the, the talent. That, that they're too regimented. They made it! They fucking made it! And I get, and I, and I give you and I get to give you credit, Manny. I wish your city took it better than Vancouver 10 years ago. You know what? <laughs> Folks, there are people. Compl- there were people in, in media complaining about how stiff the the the, the uh, right squad was. Uh, what? No, not that right squad. The, the police squad. You know. You know what I mean. Look, God. they they took. <laughs> I was making a police squad naked gun joke, but at the same time, the way they handled the the the, the mob. There was there, there was a lot of people in, in that square watching that game, and a whole lot of them were, didn't give a fuck about hockey. So the cops saw what happened in Vancouver and said, "Fuck that noise!" And as soon as the 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 the, the riffraff decided to be the riffraff, out went out went the point the, the the gas and people and poor Habs some poor legitimate Habs fans had to suffer for it. You know what? You want your city to burn down? That's how you get the city to burn down because there will always be the generic, the, 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 the degenerate pyromaniac who wants to flip a car, no matter the circumstance. They just needed the excuse. And we're thinking that we're thinking that riot. Top, if you ask me, mm-hmm. I was thinking that riot ten years ago might have cursed, might have might have cursed Canada in general not to win a Stanley Cup, nor make it to the nor make it to the final. But I think Montreal said, "Fuck that." We're making it to the final. Yeah, we're like A and B when the that when the riot the quote unquote riots because they weren't it was just a whole lot of people trying to cause cause a riot. No cops went fuck that noise. We're still under COVID rules. Go home. Well, technically we're in green now, so the rules are a little lax, but still. Anyway, we're, we're off we're, we're rails rails. Um, Habs, Habs played the spoiler, mm-hmm. and the fact that we made it a series instead of just an outright sweep in this series tells you of the story of this run. On paper, we ain't supposed to win, and obviously at the end of the day, that's not what happened. That's obviously what happened. But we, we subverted expectation. This team subverted expectation and made it a fight. 
three times. They subverted expectation three times. Four if you count Mount Mark on Andre Fleury. Uh, that's what I mean. And I will not stop making. I will not stop making fun of, of that shit. No. Yeah. No. Put simply, we were the team that wasn't supposed to be there, and you know what? Nah. We're the Habs. We're supposed to be here, brah. Now, will they make it back? Ugh, that, de that depends. If and well, most likely not, and most likely it's going to go back to the four for a second. I will say this: from a team that was not supposed to make it to firing Claude Julien, because that's that's what happened this year. Claude Julien was given the boot, and Dominic Ducharme took uh, took uh, to, uh, well, became the interim head coach. This team was not expected to make the playoffs, period. And out of sheer luck, happenstance, or pointage, or, you know, the Flames being the fucking Flames, we made it. Barely, but made it. Ducharme earned the, the, the permanent head coach job. He earned it. Didn't someone nope. say that if Montreal won the first round? Of shit show into... The spoiler of the Stanley Cup final of, of the Stanley Cup pl playoffs. I think I remember nigh on insignificant. Manny, I think I remember someone saying that if the at, 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 at metaphorically speaking, if Montreal lost in the first round to Toronto, Mark Bergeron would be fired or something. That was uh, so, something around. The, I've heard there was. A, I don't know what to do. I mean, the way things are running right now, I am shrugging. The summer is young. I at this point. The only thing I could think of is if Bergev if Bergevin's contract's coming up, it's it's a do or die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at that point, that's that's the way that people need to see it. Bergevin needs to make it back to the playoffs to even make it a convincing argument to, argument to keep him, because the decisions he's he's been making have I've had uh, at least to my knowledge of the fandom been asking for his head. He got fucking lucky. Cool. And at this point, he needs the team to work for him to first, for him to first luck to continue. Mm -hmm. But last and certainly not least, we have to talk. We have to talk about the fact that we may be seeing the beginnings of a new empire in Tampa. Congratulations, and congratulations, NHL. Fuck. No, 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 no. The NHL, not the NBA. It the. Th First off, the uh, unlike other leagues, the NA, because of how, because of how things get so chaotic on a good year with the NHL, it is Im it is impossible to to say that to say that a league to say that um the league is fucked. I mean, con consider yeah. consider that during the during the during the days of the Evil Empire in Detroit, as dominant as Detroit was. It wasn't. It wasn't like they just cruised. In, they just cruised into the Stanley Cup for years, especially especially whenever um, Colorado was around, because those two those two teams would draw blood every single night. Oh yeah. Like, let's also not forget that back to back Stanley Cup winners are not exact are are not exactly a frequent occurrence. No, they've become increasingly rare in the cap in the current modern era where it, especially with a, with a salary cap and all that stuff mm -hmm. the montreal canadians and i believe if i remember so the last three teams to have amassed three in a row are the montreal canadians and that was back in the 80s the uh, the new york islanders but chronologically, I think I'm, I'm, I, I might have mixed them up. But the last one to, tr to have truly done it three in a row are the G are, are the the uh, Eiserman era Detroit Red Wings. You know, I thought for sure that Edmonton during during their golden years did that too. They did that in the golden years. They had four in a row. Yeah, but again, this was 80s, 90s, early 2000s before the salary cap lockout. Mm -hmm. Did away with that. 
Now, they weren't exactly cash rich, but you get the idea. This was... I don't know if they're getting... I will say this regarding the Lightning. They they won the most difficult Stanley Cup to win last year. And not just because, oh, the, the, the length and the, the competition and all that stuff. Just in general, the fact that they have to be in the bubble the longest, along with the Dallas Stars, there's no asterisk there. They've earned the cup. Here... Again, the competition was stiff because they still had a a, a a Florida Panthers team that did not suck, was the opposite of suck. Carolina Hurricanes, bunch of jerks, and one of the best New York Islanders teams since that golden since that golden era of uh, that era of the Islanders. And that's not joking; that's legit. Google it. Ah. So. To say that, oh, you know, look, there, there, there's a, it was a, not Kippersoff, but uh, the drunk dude uh, t- taking a shit on Habs fan. Yeah, I'll be salty about that. But they earned it. They earned that second cup. That yeah. at Andre Vasilevsky was, was a fucking brick wall. Like, he earned that, that, that Conn Smythe trophy. Earned it. They went from getting swept in the first round as the President's Trophy winner by the Blue Jackets to back to back Stanley Cup winners in the span of one year. I'd l- I think we'd all, I think we'd all like to like to pretend to ourselves that we that the internet bullied them into being into being Stanley Cup winners. I there 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 is a factor of that. I don't know. I don't think it's the the entire reason, but something about that loss woke that team the fuck up to not only win it in a play in the bubble playoffs, but to win it again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be it would be easy to write off the bubble win as oh you were fa- you were up against Dallas. That doesn't that doesn't mean a whole lot. Um. Especially because da- because Dallas has been has been has, has been the first round whipping boy for years, but yeah, the but the Habs were the Habs were not a cake were have not been a cakewalk this entire series. So no, I'd no, say- this was I, I, my dad refers it to running out of gas, and simply put, especially after those la- those first three games, game two should have been a Habs win. Vasilevsky is the reason why they won game two. Because that game, the way you look, you look at the stats, the shots on goal and everything else, Montreal won that fucking game. The only thing that, the only difference between this being a different, a different five game, the six game series, and the way it wound up was literally Vasilevsky shutting the door goddamn down. And everyone was saying that. And you could say Ref Puck, oh, Ref Puck was involved, but it doesn't matter. Hab showed up and Vasilevsky shut it down. So, had Vasilevsky not have been the goaltender that he was in these playoffs, especially in this final, we this would have been a very different series. Now, Tampa probably would have won it, but it would have been in six. Would have had been in six. Yeah, but I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So they took that, won the bubble playoffs, came back, defended a title with a with a Conn Smythe uh, winning uh, uh, Conn Smythe Trophy winning goaltender and uh, an offense that matched the uh, a defense that matched. The uh, the Montreal defense because the Montreal defense that was the big difference with uh, with uh, with uh, with the other series they had a they had a defense that was shutting down everybody like if you are a good goal if you scored goals previously you were not able to, you were stifled by the halves mm-hmm. but Tampa had a better stifling defense and the th- 
the thing the thing is with bo with um bo with both te with both teams is they're one they're once again a um a proof of something that Cowherd said and you know th and um I I know I know I'm re I'm referencing I'm referencing Colin Cowherd a man who I don't a man who I don't like um hey if it's a good reference it's a good reference but he he had said that players don't win championships organizations do and I think that I think that's a very much a case in point when it comes to both the Habs and with the uh, Lightning. You don't have you don't have one guy who is the guy on a lot of on a lot of um like a, like in a lot of other teams. In fact, if you look at a lot of the other teams we've talked about tonight, most of them try and rely on that guy or those guys and they and they don't make it far. But the te the teams that ha the teams that have that have just just strong just strong overall presences are the ones who always end up going far here. And the I will I will say I will say that when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the lightning, as long as as long as they stay the. They uh, I'd like to see them stay the course, but unfortunately, certain other teams. Chicago yeah. are, be, are being salty little bitches because of the, because of the fact that there are a bunch of players on the Lightning who only played in the second half of the season, and some people are and some people are claiming that they were that they were abused that they were abusing rules when you know what speaking and, we're among, and we are among some of those teams that claim that because one player uh, was able to skip the cap line, but here's the thing: a Lightning were well within the rules. They exploited a loophole, which, by the way, was exploited by another team that whipped their ass a few years earlier. So, tough tits, folks. Mm -hmm. Tough tits. I'll, so, I'll be honest. I, I really, I really think that the re that the reason why uh, why some why some teams are are pissy about are pissy about the Lightning exploiting a loophole has less to do with has. I'd say everything that almost everything to do with the fact that it's not that it's not an 06 um team doing it. It's not it's not one it's not one of the it's not one of the old guard doing it because if um if if say if say Boston was exploiting this loophole there would do you think there would be as much of a fuss from other teams? No, because it's Boston and fuck them. Okay, but okay, bad okay, bad example. Um Point is, if, point is, if an original six was do, was doing this, um, oh, there would still be bitching. There was there still be, there was still be bitching, but... with the Leafs. There'd be bitching with with uh, with Detroit. There would. I don't think it would have mattered. I don't think it would have mattered. It, a, a loophole, the loophole was exploited, and by Chicago will be pissy because it's Chicago. There you go. Yeah. So because of because of that, I do I do feel that there's going to be some talent shedding in the off season for. Ten, they're going to have to like they're going to have to 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 fit under the cap, and that's just the reality of the situation. They're not in cap hell, but it it doesn't matter. You mean something yeah. like you mean something like this, Maddie? When you were talking about earlier about people complaining. Uh, hold on. Keep in mind, this is not a. <laughs> Keep in mind, you could ask for a button, right? I don't know if you have that, do you? Grandpa Simpson, oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. Oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. Never doubt the button, man. No. No. I showed it. <laughs> but, yeah. Let him. Like at this point, it's like, yeah, we're salty about it too about that. But here's the thing: they were well within their rules. Some someone at that at the management looked at the, looked at looked, looked at that. Oh wait, a loophole! Mm -hmm. And they exploited that loophole. And if you're pissed off about that, well, you know, sorry about your damn luck. Um, I was I was gonna I was gonna go with a different wrestling I was gonna go with a different wrestling reference. What you have in mind? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Goddamn right! There, there you go. There you go. But this, but um, I, 
but even even with that, I can't. I don't. I do. I do not think that this is going to be a one and done with the with the um, lightning. Do I think? Dude, do I think that they repeated? Gonna... They repeated. I want. I want to see them repeat just for the memes. I. I honestly. I'd love a rematch. Mm-hmm. I love. I love nothing more than in 2022, in the conference final, Lightning Habs, for the Prince of Wales Trophy. That's a rematch. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, you, you you like the memories are short in certain cases. Fair enough, but ooh, ooh, I love. I'd love to see a rematch. It's not. It's not going to be the rematch we saw this year. Uh, this year, obviously, but I would love nothing more but to see that. To to to, to see who gets the better of it. Yeah. Now, if that does happen, you damn right. I'm I'm going. I'm going. Go Habs. Go with my my uh, price jersey on. Mm-hmm. You damn hippie. That's going to happen. But. We had, we gotta wait a little while for it, of course. Yeah. Um. At the very at the very least, I know that in, I know that an inevitable um. And inev- what one of the side things that I'm looking forward to j- just for my own personal laughter is an inevitable retro night happening in um, in Vancouver, because that because that means that they'd have to bring back some of the ugliest uniforms I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Note to note to all uniform designers. If anyone suggests using br- using br- using brown as part of, as part of your uniform structure, or any colors that are that are on a caramello, fire them Sack immediately. Them immediately, because you remember you remember the uniforms the Canucks had had in the eighties. Dear God, those sucked. <laughs> There are people who are nostalgic about those jerseys, to be fair, and I'm not going to shit on those people because the Vancouver Canucks were good for a while under those jerseys. Were, unlike the jersey, good. The on, the only thing, um, on the on the other hand, I will I will give them credit that unlike unlike a former team in California, they didn't try going around in white skates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that. But I think I think that'll do it for the, for this particular debriefing. We will, um, as far as far as as far as whether I'll do this, whether I'll, I am I have no plans on doing this for doing a um, doing a doing a prediction show for the for the World Series simply because there's way, there's way too many pieces to cover. We'll, we'll 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 leave the shit posting in the baseball department to urinating tree. Um, there are certainly teams teams that I'm gonna be sh- that I'm gonna be shit posting like the tens. Yes, they're called the tens. You don't get the rest of your the t- Minnesota. <laughs> you will not get the rest of your name back until you win a playoff series. <laughs> until then, you are the tens. And speaking of urinating tree, <laughs> the th- the um. The bi- the other big the other big reason for that is I is if they do an- if they do another big ass bracket like they did last year I'm not doing that that's way way too much and has way too many teams that just don't belong there like who the f- who the fuck had any hopes last year that the Cincinnati Reds would go far in the playoffs but in fact they- in fact they were nothing they in fact they um in fact they were nothing but a goose egg <laughs> no scores. Yep. But when it but um now obviously obviously once playoff se- once playoffs um not playoff season but once the hockey season starts up again we'll certainly do that. Um as far as we'll as far as whether or not we'll do one for the NBA now that it's unfucked. Um I'm debating that. I'm still I'm jump I'm jumping back and forth between whether or not I'm going to do it. Um I um the next time that and it's going to be long term, but the next time the G next time the G one comes along, I do want to do something about that because despite despite the amount of wrestling fans we have we have here in we have here in the temple and on our Discord, we haven't done a whole lot of wrestling related content all that much. The last wrestling thing related I did was the was that month of reviews that I asked you to help me out with. 
Yeah, we would need to do like a thing. I mean, the wrestling's just now waking up out of this uh, pandemic slumber, as far as uh, the the, uh, the 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 crowds and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of promotions have left. A lot of promotions have grown. Impact is a thing again, even if a small thing, but still. Mm-hmm. There's in the G1. I mean, New Japan, uh, they're still in, in in the shit. But hey, if there's a if there's a G1 Ross, uh, if there's a G1 happening, well, 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 I've kept I've kept I've kept tabs. We'll see. Yeah, I just hey! if nothing if nothing else, I'd like to, if nothing else, I'd like to do so for nostalgia's sake. And the fact that freaking Don Pagori can have not just Impact, AEW. Triple A in New Japan as well. Mm-hmm. I haven't. I haven't really done. Um, I do have one idea on the back on the back burner. I just need. I just need to get. I just need to get warm body All for right. it. I will but, tell you right now that the G1 climax because of the Olympics is happening uh, in September and October. So we'll probably be doing that around that time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Maddie, as so- as soon as you have as soon as you have the full list. We'll probably do a. We'll probably use that for a prediction thing. I know. I know that you're probably going to do that for the WrestleCast, but different energies. Yeah, like we're 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 gonna go. We're not gonna go full deep dive on everybody like you would. Like we're probably gonna go like a Phil. Go thing is, like, ooh, the matches, the matches. Mm-hmm. But with all that, with all that said, obviously, um. I I will be go, I will be heading out of town. In fact, I'm le- in fact I'm leaving tomorrow morning, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be coming back until the 26th. There will be a new there will be a new review coming this Saturday involving something that I've talked with its creator about. In the interest of full disclosure, but as you, as usual, I'm not I'm not doing any sort of um, this isn't a conflict of interest to have this kind of thing because things work differently when you're dealing with the indie tabletop market. So, um, it's a lot, it, there's a bit, there's a bit more networking involved. So the whole, so the whole, the way shilling kind of works is different, especially whenever, especially whenever you're dealing with anything outside the big two. Um, but I've already done that rant. Um, obviously there will not be geek watch on Sunday and, not obviously. but I do, I do have, um, I do have a few, I do have a few, I do have a few surprises on on the way, including including right a- right after I get back, the day after, it's gonna it's gonna be right back on the in- on the interview grind and hopefully wrapping up the final parts of the level up play test next week. Hopefully. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay. Fucking frosty, everybody.